Okay, uh, we're getting started here. So this is uh, our appropriation committee meeting. We're going over the budget today. Uh, and uh, let's, I'd like to open the meeting. So at uh, 7.07. Oh. You would like me to take notes. <laughs> So again, um, on the Appropriation Committee, we have Rebecca Roback, we have Pam Waxlax, I'm Mike Manning, and I believe we have a quorum, so we can begin. On our agenda today, we'll start with an open forum, and then start going over the Fiscal Year 19 Comprehensive Budget. Uh, we're going to go over, uh, we're going to meet with different departments today in capital articles, including uh, Parks and Recreation, DPW, IT, Police and Fire Departments, and they've all I believe they're all here. Uh, they've been invited to attend, and they're here today. So I'd like to get started. Uh, first, if there's any public comment. And I don't believe there is, so we can work on to go on to the second item on the agenda, uh, which is going over the budget. And uh, Norman Cavallo, uh, who, do we, who do you recommend we start with? Uh, yeah, in, in fact, uh, with your permission, Mr. Chair, we may simply ask the committee if there are any questions on the operating budget relating to the following very small departments. HR, town clerk, town managers, selectmen, finance, Yes, IT <laughs> <laughs> and Park and Rec. <laughs> In any order, or just start with uh, the first one? I guess. Uh, yes. I, I, again, if they, if 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 they, if the question being, are there any substantive questions from the committee regarding those budgets on the operating side? Okay, I, I do have some questions, but I'll let, uh, does anyone else have any questions? Or you go start. Okay. I'd actually like to start with uh, Parks and Recreation. I did notice, yeah. want them to come up. So. Yeah. How are you? <coughs> Good evening. So I, I do have a question on Parks and Recreation, just the sure. overall budget. I see that there is an increase. There is. Um, which is, you know, I'm looking for items that more than like uh, five percent, but I see the Parks and Rec is up significant. You know, not significantly more, but it is uh, right. uh, higher. If you want to go over what what are the uh, increases resulting from? So it is up. It's up about I guess thirty thousand or so uh, from last year, but still down from the year before. Um, and one of the things we have the budget for is the potential new uh, fields at the high school. Um, and based on a user agreement and based on um, discussions between the school department and us, it would determine that Parks and Recreation would be responsible for the scheduling of the new field and the management of expenses and the management of uh, booking out of town um, tournaments and revenue sources. So with that, we expanded the role of one of our coordinators from about a 19 hour a week position to about a 30 hour a week position. Um, so that's an increase in the um, on the salaries and personnel. Um, one of the other things that continues to be very costly, believe it or not, I know it seems like it shouldn't be, but the Claflin Memorial Fountain, um, believe it or not, it's not, as beautiful as it is and as much as everyone loves it, it's, it's very fickle and it's in constant need of painting and repair. And in the past years, we've had donations from uh, various we had a donation from the 300th Foundation that took care of some of the expenses, but really going forward, it's gonna be on Parks and Recreation to manage the expense of that. And believe it or not, it's, it's sometimes up to nine, $10,000 a year to take care of that fountain and to make sure it's running properly and that it looks the way it's supposed to look. Um, okay. On the operating, on the programming side, really we, um, with the continuing expansion of our programming, new programs, expansion of existing programs, um, you know, you can see the big line on there from miscellaneous other, other contracted service, but we offset that with, with expanded revenues as well. So that's, that's pretty much a break even. 
Uh, we're breaking ground on a dog park this fall. That's going to require some maintenance as well, especially year one. Tough to anticipate. So, but I anticipated another eight or nine thousand dollars for that. Um, and that's really the, the big drivers of our increase. Uh, other than that, it's it's pretty much the same operating uh, model. Um, you know, we our programming revenues typically cover all our programming costs, and then the town is um, the town helps us subsidize the sort of the cost or the or the assets that don't generate revenue, the beach, um, the common, um, you know, the, the the salaries of the uh, the office, and, and things like that. So, but there is a little bit of an increased cost this year for that. Okay, just to follow up on the the dog park, is is that eight or nine thousand? Is that expected to be an annual cost, or is this a one time? No, is this the first year. I anticipate it being a one time cost because I think the goal is to set up a um, a nonprofit group like a Friends of the Dog Park group that's going to do fundraising to take care of the maintenance of the dog park. But I don't anticipate that that's going to happen year one. I think that's going to take a little bit of time. So I, I think I. I, I think it would be the responsible thing for me to budget for that year one. I'd like to follow up on the uh, extra scheduling that you've got for the anticipated fields at the high school. Mm -hmm. On Monday night, we heard about a, re a revolving fund that would capture both the revenues and the um, expenses associated with Correct. the use of that field. Would they not go against the? Would that not go into the revolving fund or? So there's a separate. It's good. That's actually not part of my enterprise fund. That's going to be part of the school. From what I understand, Norman, that's going to be part of the school's financial. Yes. Yeah, so, so far, the indication is that uh, the revolving fund will be under the control and authority of the school committee. So. But we're going to be managing it. So the woman, woman in my office is really who's developed relationships with different organizations. She's going to be booking and scheduling. And then we're actually going to be receiving and processing payments. And it's, it, can get, it can get pretty, it can take up a lot of time. So I guess my question is why wouldn't it be part of that I understood that the revolving fund was going to capture both the revenues and expenses associated with it. Correct. Yeah. Basically, so this is an expense. And so this is an expense associated with it. It is and it isn't because she also manages um, Fruit Street, and most of these tournaments are going to be at both sites. So the determination we made is that we will take on the cost, we'll take on the personnel cost for that. Is, is the agreement. A, a lot of it has to do with the fact that the fields are being funded partially by CPC money. So it's a town community asset, meaning it shouldn't be necessarily managed by the schools. It should be managed by the town, being that it's going to be a community field and, and also a non-community field, meaning out of town. So that was you know, after some brainstorming between the school committee and my board, that's the determination that they came to. Does that make any sense? Okay. <laughs> is it it's the a, answer I want to hear? It's a, little we'll convoluted. it's a little convoluted. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's, it's a little bit of a complicated thing when you think about how it's being funded and what it's being used for, but where it's located. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's not an easy, it's not an easy puzzle to figure out all the time. Well, I think our concern is that it's not something that's going to be funded by that revolving fund. That, I mean, not within the revolving funds, but by the revenue that's coming in from the, the field rental. So this so is kind of an added expense that feels like it's getting tacked well, on. Well, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be added expense no matter what, whether it's being funded by Parks and Rec or whether it's being funded by the revolving fund. It's still going to be, it's still going to be an expense. But it's, the revolving fund is coming from actual users of the field, whereas if it's a town expense, it's coming from taxpayers' pockets. I understand, mm -hmm. yeah. but she's going to be, it's a payroll. It's a payroll thing. I don't know how you make a payroll salary payment out of a revolving fund. I don't even know if that's, is that even possible to do? It's possible. Okay. That's, I guess that's something that could be considered. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so cross charge. I, obviously, the question, the, the comments that we're making is, that you, it's complicated to explain how it's being done, but it, will it be more complicated to actually execute to make sure the right funds are being applied. You know, your budget's taking the brunt of the cost, but making sure that the revolving, the revolving, revolving fund is actually the source of paying for that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah. So. In, in, in fact, um, I, I can just to clarify my earlier response, the MOU um, identifies an oversight committee, uh, including members from Park and Rec, the school committee, and the finance director, as well as the business manager will also be part of that oversight group. In terms of the revolving fund, there are other complications that we're currently going through. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, it has been brought to our attention that if we use a revolving fund to pay salaries, uh, we're then obligated by law to pay the benefits, the fringe benefits mm -hmm. from that revolving fund. Um, we are also looking, and, and, and this came up very recently, mm -hmm. we're also looking at what would be the advantages of perhaps revolving fund being controlled by Park and Rec. I, I had not yet raised this with you um, versus the school, the, the school department. The whole idea being it's just as easy to execute as to, if it's hard to describe, maybe it's too challenge, you know, too difficult to execute in the right way. So I think yeah. thinking about it from that perspective may help. Yeah. What, any other? I did have one question. Um, sure. I know we heard from the facilities director on Monday night and um, there's indication that Parks and Rec is hoping to use the gym at Central School once Marathon School opens. We're just curious as to how much usage you think that that's going to um, have. Sure. So in the past, we have operated um, a summer playground group at a center school and then also in-town basketball. Um, so we want to continue to do that, obviously. Um, there's never enough gym space in town. So even with the new gym at Marathon mm -hmm. School, um, we don't want to lose that gym, especially this year, um, because it's it'll be the operation will be hard to schedule. Mm -hmm. um, but now that we do have this gym, um, we're planning on a badminton league, a adult men's volleyball league, a floor hockey league, and a bunch of other more academic intellectual type programming for youth groups in the six classrooms that make up the back third of that building, I suppose. The building is, is actually a three-section building. Mm -hmm. I think we all know this by now. <laughs> the middle one being sort of useless. And then the back part of the building still having useful purpose, at least for the short term. So I intend to uh, maximize all potential revenue channels out of that building while I have it. Um, that's my goal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to read the question I had written down. Um, I know that there are costs that Parks and Rec bears, um, i.e. the town common and whatnot that they you know don't offset revenue for. Mm -hmm. um, but has a determination or audit been done of programs to, term, to determine if they're economically feasible or sure. a basis was made that the program adds value to the town even though the costs aren't covered? Okay. What do you mean by a program? Uh, you know, like flag football. like. Okay. Ba youth sure. basketball. I mean, I know some are, so, are could be huge money makers. So, sure. So we we review every program at year end, um, and then year over year, all of our programming is break even at worst. All of it. Um, we won't we won't continue to run a program if it's operating at a loss. And and since I started probably four years ago, through through certain reviews, we have eliminated sort of programs that either run at a loss or are simply not well attended. And it's a, it's, a, it's a very fluid process that you go through. But, you know, I've been directed by the Parks and Rec Board not to operate programs that, that operate at a loss, to discontinue them or to raise fees or to figure out ways to make them um, at least break even. So we do that. Um, and, and, you know, I know there's a lot of debate on enterprise funds in general. And I've done a lot of research on it. So, you know, I, and I have for you, Pam, if you'd like, I got kind of a summary I did on it. But there's basically, there's basically three, three, the Department of Revenue recognizes three ways to operate an enterprise fund. One is self-sufficiency, right? It breaks even. One is it operates at a loss, and one is it operates at a gain. Um, self-sufficient enterprise funds are self-explanatory. 
if you're running out of gain, you either need to lower your fees or return those gains back to the general fund. If you operate a loss, which is what we do, um, the town is responsible for subsidizing that as long as the, uh, the residents feel that it's the best way to operate a parks and rec organization. We feel it is the best way because really the biggest benefit of an enterprise fund is it's the only way to capture the true total cost of service for an organization. Mm -hmm. um, it's a separate, an enterprise fund is a fancy word for saying it's basically a separate set of financial statements and a separate set of, you know, a, a separate P&L for lack of a better word. So we're able to capture our total cost of service um, each year and, and year to year. And even though enterprise funds can be a little rigid, they don't really, they're not very good for a continuously changing environment, which is what we sometimes are. So it's, it's challenging sometimes at year end. It's when you're out of money, you're kind of out of money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 it's challenging for me. So, but still the benefit of the enterprise funds outweigh the disadvantages of it by, by so much. I, I can't think of another way that I'd rather operate that my board agrees um, and it's you know each year we learn a little bit more about it it's 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 tricky it's a little tricky but I think from a reporting standpoint it's very easy for me to say this is what it cost the town last year and there's there's nothing missing there's nothing that I haven't captured um, and especially now with Munis being up and running for a few years we're we're all very confident that the, that the data and, the, and everything's, there's a lot of integrity there now. So I can't see a better way to operate, but I'm always open for suggestions <laughs> <laughs> and, and um, ways to improve it. Okay, thanks. Sorry if it was long. No, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for so. Parks and Rec? Oh. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, again, I think the goal is uh, if the if the committee has any questions for the smaller departments, uh, including a real senior center as well. The senior center is here. So I had a question about the HR expenses. Okay. Just trying to understand what the increase was related to that. Bear with me for one second. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Hi. Nice to meet you. Shaka Duel just joined the meeting. Yeah, I am. Everybody else knows yeah. me, so. <laughs> you Maria? Yeah. I think you're all set. I think yeah. Parkenbeck is all set. Yes. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I just, uh, you know, just looking through the budget and looking at what goes up or down, mostly up, um, I'm just trying to understand I what have a little the down. increase was. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes, I did have a little down. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that the increase was based on basically, you know, which was part of the budget submission, is um, one of the increases has to do with the advertising line item. So in the past, when we advertised positions, ballpark 25 to 29 on average the last three years, we would place an ad in the MMA, which is the Mass Municipal Association. Everybody goes there for municipal positions. Um, and those, um, that ad, those ads ranged about $140, and we would pay them for the different departments. Um, some of the um, some of the positions though required additional outreach other than our standard you know more affordable such as the Sunday Metro West which has a subscription of about 160,000 members so the CFO um, uh, the library director those would go in the Boston Globe so those ads are much more expensive we tried at times to use, theoretically, there'd be salary savings and to pay for those ads, um, but not always the case. So in order to streamline everything from all the other departments, it's gonna be streamlined through the HR. So it looks like there's an increase 
um, and there there is, but it's not all attributed to <coughs> HR or HR positions. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Anything else for HR? I do not have anything for HR. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. <laughs> do you want to just run down, like, go by the budget? Yeah, just you know, we can jump around, but hit the general and then the okay, the ones that don't have capital articles associated. Yeah, right now I'm still you know on the. The yes. operating, yes. Yeah, yeah that, that the smaller so account. Yep. So um, <coughs> I have a question regarding you know finance that the budget is up nineteen uh, personnel services up nineteen percent for an overall seventeen percent increase. Yeah. Could that be explained? Y yes. Um, we we brought in a new auditor to uh, to, to help us in our auditing function. Uh, and one of the recommendations that came from that process was uh, uh, there's, a, there's a significant volume of expenses uh, that fall under the category procurement. And uh, we do not have a centralized procurement process in town. And thus, we're suggesting that we add a procurement position uh, in the finance department. Um, a, and based on our preliminary conversations with, with other towns, as well as um, when we went through the CIC process, there was a clear observation that this position will immediately pay for itself. What, what do we do today, or what, what expense do we have today? Today, the expense is borne by the individual departments. For example, if DPW is running a procurement process, uh, that, that, that goes through the, the DPW. Uh, and in some cases, uh, that procurement process is supported by consultants who we, we pay s significant amounts um, for helping us in that regard. So probably next year will be reflected in next year's, but it, is that savings already accounted for in this budget or starting next year because mm. someone's get depending on when you hire the person? The, the example I use is usually on a project by project basis. So if, for example, John is running a procurement process for the water tank on Grove Street, that process is partially supported by the consultants who are helping um, in designing the project. Okay. So it sounds so, like the consultants have some expertise beyond the procurement process, so, so what, will, will this actually replace the consultants or just kind of reduce the hours of the, what the consultant is doing? It might partially reduce the cost of the capital projects to the town. It also, this position is expected to uh, support some of the accounting functions uh, in the office. Okay. I don't know where we stand right now with the school, um, the accreditation that they need that um, Mr. Dumas had for the, the, what is it, the MM? MCCPO? Yeah. Yes. Will this person have that? Um, are you looking for someone who has Definitely. that certification? Definitely, yes. Okay. And also expertise running procurement processes for municipal departments. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, for, for us, the big driver was that this indications are that this position will pay for itself. See, I, th I thought, um, and, I, and I think I'm thinking procurement in the wrong way, um, mo just having been doing it for the school building committee is a lot of things are being bought off the state bid list for furniture and things like that but I think this is going outside just buying paper copier for the machines this is a more holistic approach more holistic approach more centralized more streamlined and also it frees up the department has to focus on their primary responsibilities Sure, Norman. How did we uh, calculate the benefit to offset the cost in this case? Potential savings mm -hmm. uh, from one at the project level, and then secondly in utilizing centralized purchasing. Okay. Yeah. So, so project level, when you say it's because of uh, not hiring consultants or any external resources to do the same, or 
not utilizing consultants at the level at which we currently are. Any other questions regarding finance? Mm -hmm. Have yeah. one for assessors. I saw that one too. You can <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just understanding what the personal services increases related to. Yeah, um, twofold. We we adjusted the salary for the principal assessor to market one, and then the second reason is. Uh, we replaced the assistant principal assessor and the person who we hired, aptly qualified, uh, no, eminently qualified, uh, and uh, we're paying the metric rate, which is higher than what we were paying the person who left. Okay. I, okay. I, I can ask about legal and why it's not going up. <laughs> you want to ask that? No. We're, we're counting on the reserve fund transfer process. I think. <laughs> Say that one more time, please. <laughs> the, the, year transfer. the big joke. Oh. Yeah, the big joke is that every every year we come to the appropriations committee to ask for a transfer from the reserve fund okay. to augment the legal uh, services yeah. department budget. <laughs> so we Sounds like a special education for the school. <laughs> I have IT, but IT also has some capital articles, so I'm going to wait on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about, um, I saw the uh, election and registration, although it's not a big budget, um, I see that's up 116%. Did you see the picture? Impressive. I know, it's, I know, it's yeah. a big, that's a big percentage. Oh, is that a, is that a capital alert? It's in the operating budget. That's, so. This is the operating budget. Um, so, oh, explanation okay. for that is Our sign that, off. yeah, it, it, elections is a bit of a roller coaster. Um, when we're on a year like last year, we have, or actually our current fiscal year right now, we only have one scheduled election. And that's just the annual town election that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Uh, so all those personnel hours, which is really the bulk of the change on it, uh, is what's kind of being affected here, is we're having an additional two full elections, along with trying to budget for early voting, which now we know what the state will and won't pay back, uh, because we just received our reimbursement from the state for 2016. But currently we're all, uh, I like to make sure we have enough room for the potential of a special if it were to pop up so that we don't get caught off guard and have to ask for year-end transfer just because we had a special town meeting or something. Um, but other than that, I'm looking at it's probably going to end up being used on potential early voting for primaries that's coming up. Okay. When is the primary? Primary is going to be the day after Labor Day. Okay. It's late. Okay. <laughs> we had to move it around, or they had to move it around because it landed on a holiday. Yeah. And then they found the only day they could move it to was the day after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before the <Okay>. long weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so just curious. So do we expect some of it will be reimbursed in a couple of years down the road? Yep. Uh, yeah. Typically, so. At the rate that we're going right now, I probably won't be using all of the funds for that I put in for um, the budget for last year when it came to staffing. Just because of the fact that I was ready for us to have a special town meeting or election and be ready for that staffing. But fortunately, so far, we have not had one. Uh, so that will be returned. Uh, okay. and untouched, so that'll go back into money to be used at a later date. Thank okay. you, Bree. Thank you. Any other questions? I think that was it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. Anything for town clerk while I'm here? Or? No, that, I, like, okay. I like that budget. Oh, okay. you've, you've, got, you've got your new machine. <laughs> I think it's down. Right? Yeah, but yeah. he's got his capital article still yeah. I forgot yeah. about. Yeah.
I'll be around. Don't worry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Did we want to go into IT or wait till the end? I think wait. Okay. And then we can, if you want to, we could skip down to the Health and Human Services and Culture and Recreation. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. going to do. Okay. So we're going to the Health and Human Services. And, uh, I do have a question for the Senior Center. Yes. So the budget is up. Personnel budget's up 10% with a total of 8%. That can be explained, that increase? Yes. Um, the, I think there's one key strategic driver. Okay. Um, about three or four years ago, we came up with a strategic plan for the senior center, which uh, we have phased in over the last three years. And the primary focus of the, of the plan was to provide consistent frontline services to our seniors. And we have been increasing the hours for the personnel that are directly involved in providing that consistent service. And this is the last phase in this strategy where we're increasing the hours of the receptionist. As we all know, if you're arriving at the, at the senior center, we have had the benefit of relying on volunteers to do the bulk of that, 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 that work. Um, we have a part-time receptionist. We want to increase the hours for that for, for, for that position, and overall, I, 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 I say this proudly. The senior center has done a great job relying on outside resources to fund programming. The town is only paying four thousand dollars for programming uh, that that takes place at the senior center, and all of us who have been at the senior center know that it's, it's, it's active from 8 in the morning until early afternoon. So what we're trying to do again here is to finish up our strategic plan where we'll provide frontline services on a consistent basis for the seniors who um, visit the senior center. Okay. Any questions? Good. Any questions on health and Health and Human Services? Uh, I had asked the same question about personal services on the Youth and Family Services and the increase there. Yes, um, again, that, that the increase reflects the adjustment that we made to the director's salary, adjusting it to market. Okay. And this happened in FY18. So there's no changes, additional personnel or anything? Is no additional that. personnel. Okay. I, I, again, as we know, we've, we've successfully, through the efforts of uh, the director, uh, working with the town manager's office, secured um, on the average $100,000 to help support that department every year through grants. Any other questions on health and human services? No. No. Want to go on to library? <laughs> I think we've heard it several times, but we get our we get our chance to ask questions. Something, a question, or um, like to? Well, just my question is: Well, the budget is up twenty percent year over year. So, yes. if you want to sure. go into more detail on it, on that, yeah. that would be great. So, there's there's three pieces of this, and it's all personnel. Um, the first is there's about a ten thousand portion dollar portion that increase that is simply um, we have a couple of new staff and new positions who are being paid at a higher rate. Um, due to making a competitive offer, and we have staff raises over last year with the performance review system. Um, the rest of that is, um, some of it is increased staffing to support uh, consistent operations with the hours that we have now. Uh, so we have a request in there that, I'm just pulling up my numbers here, 
um, comes <coughs> to about $1,700 a year, and that is to help us have the additional funding to provide a second staff member in the children's room on Saturdays. Um, we used to see 50 to 70 people a day in the children's room on Saturdays that were open, and our most recent figure is we're averaging 213 people a day in the children's room on Saturdays. And in a bigger room, there aren't as good sight lines as there used to be. It's very difficult for one staff member to help everybody, check people out, stay on top of the room so that you know we're monitoring kids who may be playing softball in the aisles, that kind of thing. Um, We've, we've honestly already started doing this. We've, we've found a little wiggle room in our substitute budget, but I'd like a little bump to make sure we can continue doing it without putting a strain on our substitute budget, which would affect our coverage in other areas. Um, but it's, it's been a huge help for staff to have that extra person in the building on Saturdays. Um, the other piece of sort of maintaining services with the, the hours we have now is um, we have a position that's currently part-time um, where this person does basically almost all of our administrative support on the back end, handles our invoices and our billing for us, um, does a number of administrative support tasks for me, helps with publicity for events, um, doing functions that are most efficiently centralized instead of being split out to the departments, things like sending coordinated bulletins out to our local media. Um, she does some of our materials processing and she assists on desk. Um, and she's trying to do all that in 19 hours a week. And um, when we, when I put this budget in, we said, well, the state anticipates to see a 30% <coughs> increase in business in a new building. I can tell you um, some of the things that touch her job over the last three years, we've had an 82% increase in the number of children's events we're offering, a 280% increase in the number of teen events we're offering, a 75% increase in the number of adult events. So total, if you look at the first four months we were open versus the comparable um, four months uh, the, of the last time period when we were in the old building, we were doing 11 more events per month on average. She's managing posters for that. She's managing information flow for that. She's managing paying the presenters for that, dealing with the invoices. Do we have the W-9 so that we can get people paid promptly and they want to come back to the library? That's an increase for her. Um, we've also had a 38% increase between those two periods in the sheer number of items we are adding to the collection over time. And again, she's handling our invoices for that. She's making sure that each different kind of material gets paid out of the right pot of money because we have about half a dozen that have to be juggled that have different purposes. Um, so her position is increasing in complexity and just in the sheer volume of work she has to do. Um, she's also spending an additional one to two hours of a week on desk coverage because we now have to cover meal breaks, which we didn't have to do previously. Uh, we had desks that were close enough that people could kind of compensate. Um, so she's seeing a dramatic increase in her workload, and she's beginning to come to me saying, I can't possibly get everything done that I need to do. Um, expanding her position to full-time was part of a strategic staffing plan that we presented and ran by the town manager, I believe, in 2015. Uh, we've accomplished most of the other objectives on that plan. Putting this position to full time was actually in our FY18 budget request and we did cut it at that time because there were other priorities. So I'd like to try to get it again. Um, at this point, if we don't get her to full time, we're gonna have to start moving tasks around and somebody's going to have to reduce something else they're doing, probably outreach, publicity, possibly the amount of programming we're doing. We don't really want to have to do that. Um, because this is a time when we're trying to really sustain a, a significant increase in business. Those are the pieces of it that are for what we're doing now. Um, a significant portion of this, uh, $49,000 and change, represents the cost of adding hours to library operations. This is something that the town manager and I discussed and decided to include in this budget. Um, this represents the cost of adding a lot of hours, um, two evenings a week, Saturdays in the summer, and four hours on Sundays. Um, and we put it in because we are hearing from people that it is wanted, that um, people are wanting to use the new building we have, that we aren't open enough, working parents are having trouble getting in, bringing their kids in, especially in the summers. Um, working people in general, you know, we are mostly open when people are at work who work full time. So we think this is a priority. We put it in the budget. How this breaks down, um, 
do you want me to break it down or do you just want me to tell you that's the whole cost if we added everything? <laughs> what, what would you like me to do? How complex do you want me Can to Can you say what the number was again, the total cost? The total, and this is for, so two evenings, Saturdays in summer, and four hours on Sundays, uh, is $49,268. Okay. And so sure. that takes every day, Monday to Friday, till 8 till o'clock. Till 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then... Will the Sundays be throughout the year as well? Yes, or? that is okay. assuming year-round Sundays. If okay. we got Sunday funding and we weren't open year-round Saturdays, we probably wouldn't open on Sundays in the summer. People would be confused. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the net uh, staff increase you're anticipating? Uh, in this FTEs. in this budget, FTEs. Uh, this would add half an FTE. So the additional staffing for. Um, Oh, sorry, added hours. I apologize, that's not what we're talking about. So to increase these hours, I anticipate we would have to hire, I had this number in my head a minute ago, I'm sorry folks. It would be, I believe, four part-time positions minimum. So two FTEs. Um, our minimum staffing level is four people in the library at all times. Is, is the first position you discussed, you know, the Saturday, is that a part-time position? That is added to, um, we have a little pool of money that's not allocated to anybody because it's a rotating coverage. So our Saturdays are a, a rotation. Um, so basically it would just be a staff member would be assigned to it and who would being paid would be varied each week. So that calculation is based on an average of what staff are paid uh, who might, might be covering that position. So it's... So. So overall, it's the addition of one from a part-time to one full-time, at least one full-time position. Yes. Just because, yeah, just looking, just because every time you add a full-time position now, you start adding all the benefits and yes. the cost outside. Mm -hmm. And we understand that, and, and I wouldn't be asking if we didn't feel it was getting pretty key to our ability to operate efficiently. At the, so there's four part-time. Are they yes. out of hours that um, requires benefits, or are they still below the... So I believe it would be, I'm going to do the math in my head, six hours on Saturdays, six hours, 12. So it would be a 16 hours of added time that we would have to cover if we opened all of those, mm -hmm. all of those hours. So that's below the, the threshold. The threshold. Yeah. Okay. And we could hire potentially more people than that at more part-time, but mm -hmm. usually it's best, I think, to give people as many hours as you can. Novel concept open on Sundays. <laughs> I know. I can tell you, I was there cleaning up the Sunday after a novel affair, and we had half a dozen families walk up to the door, pull on the doors, and be oh. very confused that they couldn't get into the building on a Sunday. And we've had other people commenting on it. So, if I can take a moment to do a separate plug, we'll be starting our strategic planning process, <laughs> and we'll be having a survey. And one of the things we will be asking is what people's priorities are if we were to be able to open additional hours when they would want to see us open. So it'll be interesting. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It may be covered anywhere else, somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Do you see any potential for additional revenue through the activities or events? Mm -hmm. uh, as a public library, philosophically, we do not charge. Um, some libraries identify revenue streams through sort of rental collections that you know you can get priority on holds, or you can get it. It's always on the shelf, but it's only for a week. Um, my feeling really is, you know, the public library is one of those places where you can go and your card will get you anything. Um, so it's very difficult for me to, you know, sort of say I'm, I'm good with that because we, or we operate on basis of equitable access for everybody. Um, we do collect fines and fees for overdue items and that funds, I think we do five to six thousand dollars a year and that funds materials purchases. Do you have a rental on the meeting rooms and stuff? Do we uh, have rentals of the meeting rooms or? We allow our meeting rooms to be reserved by nonprofits only, so we do not charge for that. If I may, mm -hmm. I think we all saw the, the energy, the passion, uh, and the generosity of the community uh, during the fundraising phase uh, for the library project. And I think what this then does, i.e. the expanded hours, I think it opens up an opportunity for, for us to go back one more time to the well and perhaps pose a challenge uh, to the foundation as well as the friends of the library to see if they could 
perhaps earmark or target some of their fundraising towards supporting these additional hours. Mm -hmm. Again, for me, it presents an opportunity to have a conversation. It's yeah. And I think the foundation might be open to that, that conversation. They're looking for something significant that they can now start fundraising for. I just, you know, one question that just came up, you're talking about the meeting rooms for nonprofits. Yes. Is that strictly during normal library hours or or beyond where it still would be no charge and mm -hmm. therefore someone has to man the, the building at that time? Yeah. So outside groups that are not town affiliates is library hours only. Um, and we are, there are conversations happening around whether or how we could expand that because we know there's a demand but payment for you know how we're going to fund a staff person to supervise the building is the question. Town boards and committees, if you have a town employee who is affiliated and will be there for the whole meeting, we have a couple of minor building things that we're still working on correcting. But at that point, uh, the building will be reservable for after hours meetings for town um, official groups. So you, in fact, may be able to meet in the library next year if you want to. Yeah. Okay. And in fact, if I may add also, you had on Monday through Dave Del Torrio, the town engineer facilities coordinator, um, that perhaps part of the responsibility for the additional custodian staff that he has proposed would be making sure that if there are meetings uh, in town facilities mm -hmm. outside the operating hours of that facility, that that individual be available to support that meeting. That is something Dave and I have discussed and that I'm very excited about. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So busy. That's yeah. great. Thank you. <laughs> so I just had. I'm going to flip around. We didn't discuss Monday night. Keep tech. Is that um, the? actual number from their their finance guy this year yes or, okay yeah um, <laughs> I, I, again it, it's it's that's where the number is but all, by all indications we're actually getting a reduction because the number of students going to give tech has gone down so I thought earlier in the budget season it was going to go up right. that's that's what we were thinking but now they have the actual numbers um, okay. their budget is going through its review process we hope that that number holds how many down do you want? Uh, I can put it up for you. If, one second. No, yeah, yeah, I'm all of this. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. It's fine, yeah. Okay. yeah exactly. <laughs> Bockington student enrollment for FY19 decreased from 22 to 20, which is a 9.09% .09 decrease from the FY18 enrollment. Thank you. Okay, are there any other questions before we get to the IT? I guess that would be... Oh, and then we'll hit the 
Fire, please. Yeah. yeah. So we have questions for IT. We have Josh. Start off with the first question. Mm -hmm. yeah. first question. I think, oh, it's just um, personal services for IT and understanding the increase. So that um, that increase is um, fully due to the request of one additional staff member uh, to the department. Is that full time? That is full time. How many do you have now? Uh, including <laughs> myself. I know it's a lean operation. <laughs> it, it is a lean operation. Um, including myself, there's two full-time employees in the department. Um, we do also have a part-time, temporary, paid intern. What is the new, is a new position just the same as the other two positions, or is there a unique uh, skill? Um, no, so the two positions that we have now are, are not the same. Um, I mean, of, of course, there's some amount of overlap. We work closely with one another, the, the two full-time employees. Um, but the, the other full-time employee is a GIS database um, coordinator who's really focused on our, um, primarily our town GIS um, mapping requirements um, and services that we provide within that space. And then she um, also does uh, play a core role in any other kind of data analysis um, that happens within the department or that we, um, where we offer those services to other departments based on what their needs are. Um, for example, right now we're going through some exercises with the uh, public safety, the fire department regarding dispatch times, um, the police department um, looking at some, some traffic analysis and, and um, accident spots, so things like that. She gets involved in those projects um, and then also does help out where she can um, with some day-to-day -day operations. Um, but she's, she's not an IT generalist um, and is a, is her training is very uh, specialized in that mapping space. Um, so the, 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 the additional um, third person would, would really be um, their, their primary role would be first line help desk support, um, break fix, um, to be able to, to add an additional layer there um, between myself and those kind of reactive um, situations that, that come up nonstop, right, when you're dealing with a support organization that the size of what we're dealing with. Um, and then also just be, be another set of hands to help out with um, you know, on the network side, implementations, servers, storage, um, our virtualiz virtualization environment, um, backups, security, uh, new implementations that we're doing uh, across town. And Josh, what are the key IT assets uh, that you have and under the management of IT? Could you, could you say that again, I'm sorry? Key IT assets. Um, is it servers, network, databases that you mentioned, GIS? Is that, uh, does that cover everything, or what else do you have? Uh, if, if it touches technology, we own it. Um, so soup to nuts, um, infrastructure, mm -hmm. a firewall, network configurations, town-owned fiber, um, public Wi-Fi and public buildings, um, anything on the network, uh, all printing services, uh, yes, physical servers that exist um, within both the main site, uh, Town Hall, 18 Main Street, as well as uh, public safety data center, um, data center soup to nuts again, storage, backups. Um, desktop support, all, all associated um, desktop support, um, hardware refresh associated with desktop support, mobility, um, cell phones, tablets, 
um, mobility as it relates to public safety, so modems and technology and all of our police cruisers, uh, mobility and all of our fire apparatus um, to include modems, Wi-Fi hotspots, um, GPS. Um, this also includes all of our um, CAD from a public safety dispatch standpoint. Um, Quite a handful here. There's, 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 there, 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 there is, there is more. I, I'm, I'm sure that that's not all, but that's, I would say, a good portion of it. Uh, so you self, mobile. Self <laughs> and you, you don't what? handle the schools technology but you work with them for certain things like servers and switches and stuff correct um, correct okay. yes so they they are um, managed separately but there's a lot of overlap yeah. um, so at any place where we see an ability to collaborate with the schools we absolutely do mm -hmm. and so yes the um, data center servers and storage is one of those instances so from a resiliency and redundancy standpoint, we have the ability to fail over our virtual environment. Oh, that's the big one I forgot, right? Um, Dell EMC, a little bit of storage and virtualization that we do. Uh, that <laughs> falls under me as well. Um, so yeah, from a, from a resiliency and redundancy standpoint, we do have the ability to fail over within each other's data centers. Um, but saying that the school does run their own data center and the town does run their own data center um, again, both, both at 18 Main Street for town services as well as at the public safety dispatch building um, dedicated for public safety. Thank you. Is that operational budget wise? Mm -hmm. so May we ask about the capital parts of it now? I think we're ready for that. So you want to go over your capital requests? Uh, sure. Uh, we have three capital requests this year. Um, the first is a um, recurring request that, that we have um, every year, uh, which is hardware refresh to replace aging end user computing desktops and laptops and associated peripherals um, that, that, that are tied to those devices. Um, we're requesting this be funded at the same uh, amount as last year, which is $35,000. Um, our, our goal in this space is to kind of find a, a level fund dollar amount where we know that this is the anticipated cost year over year to, sort of, to support the replacement of these computing devices at some preset interval. Um, so our, um, the, the interval that we've identified is a useful life, life of a laptop for three and a half years and the useful life of a desktop for five years. So given the current um, fleet and inventory that we have of laptops and desktops at that refresh interval, um, we'd be looking at a yearly cost, uh, again, average, because it's not a perfect distribution of, of, of age, um, but an average yearly cost of $40,000 per year. Um, and that, that, I should specify, that does also include a monitor replacement at every other refresh cycle. So we're estimating a monitor's expected life to be eight and a half years. Um, we're um, at this point really still kind of trying to play catch up. And so you would anticipate if you're playing catch up that you're asking for more than that 40,000. But this was a, an item, a line item that was kind of underfunded for a number of years. Um, so the fact that we're able to do anything is, is great. Um, right now, as we approach the end of this current fiscal year, um, given the replacements that we have um, left to perform in the following two and a half months of the current fiscal year, we'll be, wrap, we'll be going into July of 2018 um, with 40 desktops that are over five years old. Um, and five laptops that are over three years old. Um, so this is funding to really kind of replace the oldest of the old um, as those machines really have reached the end of their life. So this was the end use hardware replacement for $35,000? Correct. Am I 
also see um, the public safety safety server upgrade. Sure. Yeah. No. No other questions on hardware refresh. I mean, you hit it in okay. that you're still trying to play catch up. Yeah. Thank you. Um, sure. The public safety um, server upgrade. So this is to replace um, essentially the the data center, the, the the core hardware of the data center that resides at the police station for public safety. Um, this is replacing hardware that right now is over eight years old. Um, and so we, our, our hands are tied there from a, a standpoint of, um, of what, what versions of, of OS and software we're able to run. So we're, we're tied running um, some versions of software that have um, been out of mainstream support for some amount of time due to the hardware that we're running. Um, so this will allow us to um, get ourselves out of that situation, um, as well as some licensing that'll improve the services that we're able to deliver to our officers um, in the police cruisers um, from a mobility standpoint, and that will extend as well to um, fire uh, in terms of what they're able to do within the cruisers and apparatus. Um, this is also a, a spot where we've been working with the schools um, in trying to see if we have some other ways to leverage this also as a kind of a hot site um, because it is on, on the town fiber interconnected with the schools um, to help add to that resiliency. Um, so this is something that this, this specific article um, in and of itself would not directly impact the schools, but as we move forward, we're looking at next year having a joint article with the schools to replace the schools in town data center, and this could help lay the, um, the groundwork and potentially save us some money um, next year. Um, but again, this, this stands on its own. This needs to happen independent of anything that may happen next year at the, at the school and town level. So the sixty thousand dollars for a single single server, or are there other components and the and this No, so this software? is um this this includes um two pieces of hardware functioning fun functioning together um, from a redundancy standpoint. So essentially a two host um, node running VMware. So it includes the, the two hosts, the associated VMware licensing, and uh, shared storage. And, and then some additional licensing um, above and beyond the VMware um, licensing that, that we'd leverage, uh, again, uh, on the public safety, the cruisers and the fire apparatus. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next item is the uh, town hall security upgrades. Correct. Um, so this is town hall security upgrades for $45,500. Um, and this is comprised of uh, three parts. Uh, part one is to add key card access to all ex exterior doors at Town Hall. So this would roll that into our existing um, single data source platform uh, that we're now leveraging between uh, police, library, DPW, and um, very soon we'll be bringing the fire station online as well. Um, so at, at the head end standpoint, this is a shared database, one single system. There's no additional cost there in terms of kind of the, the brains. We've already bought the brains. Um, this, is, this is hardware and access at the door level at Town Hall. Um, it also includes one external camera per door, um, as well as internal wiring to internal doors that we've identified as locations where we may want to add key card access in the future. Um, but that is not a full outfit of the interior doors in terms of door hardware and, and having that system operational. It's simply running the wiring. And the reason that we're um, advocating for that now is that we still have some time um, where we can realize a savings by doing that sooner than later based on the status of um, 18 Main Street. Oh, was that the third one then? The Cor internal wiring that correct. sort of sets it up for yes, the Yes, correct. The internal wiring would be part three, yeah. 
this completes the plan for the security, or you're expecting to increase again next year or subsequent phases? So, in terms of the plan that we originally set forth um, two fiscal years ago, this would complete that. Um, however, I think there's there's you know security is an ongoing. Um, assessment that we work with our um, police department on in terms of how we may be able to enhance that program. Um, so that that's not to say with certainty that there may not be something that that is proposed in future years in terms of additional cameras, um, outside cameras at other town buildings, um, or other enhancements within the existing buildings. Um, but it, but at this time, uh, the the two, the original plan from two years ago was to do a two-step process to really address public safety, the two public safety buildings, and then a potential peripheral year three to do some of the, the key doors at Town Hall. So this kind of fulfills that, that original plan and vision. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think we're good. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, so we're ready to go into the larger departments at this point. Big three. <laughs> you okay, Joy? Any questions on tabulators? <laughs> no. I no. like the picture. <laughs> it's, it, it's fascinating stuff. That I, I think right. <laughs> is it is it tamper proof now? Is it you know, to worry about it? Just like before. Can it be hacked? <laughs> Can it be hacked at that point? <laughs> I think we're. Did you have any questions on the other one? I'll just be good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. We want to get into uh, in order. It would be police or DPW? Where is it? We go by account number. It's police. It's police. Then oh, fire, right. then DPW. <laughs> okay, we we'll go by account number. <laughs> Just gotta argue Chief for a lower Chief account number, John. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for my tardiness earlier. Got a little meeting for a little road race, but I have it Monday. <laughs> <laughs> what is it called? <laughs> a wet Monday. Yeah. Okay. Count two ten police. Personal services. Okay. Any questions? Just to, I get well, you know, I look at that big number of the increase and then I look at the number left to it and I'm like, oh, not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it's it's really the question is, you know, are are you increasing full time equivalents in, in police and the personal services or is this just contractual obligation or what's going on? Well we are seeking to put one extra position on the police department and uh, as I had mentioned uh, before in previous meetings uh, it will serve as twofold uh, add an additional supervisor and the extra manpower will give us the uh, an opportunity to do some uh, part time SROs so we are seeking uh, one one position. Um, mostly everything else is just uh, contractual uh, ob obligations. Um, yeah, I mean, the, basically, uh, just the, the increase besides capital is uh, the, that one extra position. And what is your current staffing level? Uh, right now we're at 25. One, uh, that position will bring us up to uh, 2026, 20, which is comparable to other communities. Um, you know, we, we could probably go for more based on the amount of call volumes that we have in this community and the extra things we do, like uh, the marathon mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and just obviously the growth yeah. in town. Sure. We will be working on a plan to keep up with that growth and a, a strategic plan. Uh, gradually grow. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do 
And in previous years, I think you had provided some metrics around the call volume and uh, response time and whatnot. Uh, just in general, do you see anything um, that stands out in those uh, trends? Uh, absolutely, uh, the the call volume has been on a uh, a, a steady incline. I was uh, incline, um, and it's with a, a variety of uh, of different uh, calls. Um, what you you do see is when you see that call volume increase, uh, you tend to see some things go down, uh, such as offices' productivity in, in the area of traffic enforcement, only because they're responding. Uh, from call to call. We are looking at a, a, a stat now uh, that the uh, Lieutenant Bennett and the Lieutenant Porter are looking at where we're good trying to measure the amount of calls that officers are on or get pulled away from, or on a community service they get pulled, uh, pulled away from. And that trend has certainly increased. And it was a tough year to measure too because we have been down uh, with uh, injuries and retirements and, re and filling uh, positions. So that number is not uh, totally a accurate because we were down uh, five uh, positions for a good part of this year. Any other questions on, on the budget? No. Want to go to the Capitol? Articles next. Your two cars. <laughs> You're going to yes. outfit the new guy with the bike? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, I, we did request uh, three cars, but um, we were able to secure a, uh, a gift uh, 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 of uh, $60,000 um, in town, and we did decide that we would uh, put that towards a uh, new vehicle, which we are in the process of purchasing now to, to supplement. Uh, that, that vehicle that we um, lost. Fabulous. <laughs> Trying to help. <laughs> so, um, what is your schedule for replacement? Is it basically going to be two every year, or? Um, we'll, we'll be working on the, uh, uh, the with the 10-year capital plan. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're going to have to play a, a little catch-up. Only because of uh, last year, only getting two mm -hmm. this year. That, that gift certainly helped, but we're probably looking at three, three. Uh, for the next couple years okay. until we can get back on that that schedule. Yeah. Um, it may stay as three, depending on how the town grows and how the department grows. Obviously, when the uh, more manpower, uh, then there'll be a need for more right. Right. vehicles. So that is the only capital article yeah. that is there. So pretty standard. It's been two vehicles for the past couple of years. I know you've always asked for mm -hmm. three, and it ends up being two. So yes. I understand <laughs> mm -hmm. the back, the, the back lot there. So, so yeah. you also have dispatch. Yes. Right. <laughs> if you look at dispatch, it, it, it's a. Uh, it seems like a substantial amount of uh, increase. Uh, but if you look from 2016 uh, to 2019, the changes are only 4.79% rather than. And, and the reason for that is that uh, back in 2016, that's when we started the, uh, the consolidation, and that's what we budgeted for the major uh, changes that, that we undertook. Um, this year, uh, the, the lodge increase is due to contractual obligations uh, uh, and the additional uh, 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 supervisor, that salary that wasn't, uh, that, that started in last year's uh, fiscal year. And, and um, that's uh, basically you know, the increase. We have the dispatch supervisor, so we have our uh, nine dispatches. Uh, we're, we're growing. A lot of call volume. When we consolidated with the fire department, we thought it was necessary to add a uh, dispatch supervisor who could focus solely on the job of supervising um, several, not just the full, the nine full timers, but also uh, I think we're up to twelve part timers as well. So there's a lot of responsibility there, and uh, it's certainly a good position. But our dispatch supervisor Megan Durad is also in the position where she can backfill overtime 
as she is still in the um, the union. Is it this past collective bargaining unit? Yes. yes. Uh, they are? And yes. are they a separate one? Yes, separate they are. Yeah. Front police. And is the supervisor of supervision 24 hours, or is it just eight hours? Oh, uh, no. It is just a, uh, a Monday through Friday job. But able to... Uh, we're in a unique position where there's always a, uh, a supervisor on duty 24-7, so that information uh, from uh, if there was a problem with a certain dispatcher, that that information would flow from that supervisor to the uh, dispatch supervisor okay. in the chain of command. Any other questions on uh, central dispatch? All right, thank you, Chief. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anybody running the race? What race? What race? Nobody keeps on asking what race. All right, next. Hey, Johnny looks like you're going to be last. Okay. <laughs> Chief. Best for last. Those there were the go. biggest yeah. requests go yeah. no. <laughs> next, next is fire. Chief yeah. Slavin. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So any any questions for Chief Slatman? Did, did you get your your people that you were looking for or are you or is this just contractual for personal services? In you might jump on Explain personnel additions. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. There's been a lot of movement in the last few weeks, so we did just uh, settle a contract. So that changed some of the numbers we've been working on. Um, Norman and I have been working hard trying to figure out uh, four firefighters. We have two in the numbers that we're, we have right now. So so two new ones you're requesting? My request, uh, my initial request was for four, four firefighters. Yeah. And, you don't and I think uh, where we are with the number, I just because there was so many moving numbers, I'm not mm -hmm. sure what's in front of you right this second. Okay. So I believe there's two firefighters in front of you right this second. Is it reflected in the personnel services, or is, is that going to be in the um, uh, ambulance revolving fund? Yeah, in, in, that's, that, in fact, that's the point I wanted to um, introduce right up front. The salary for the two new um, impact position firefighters is not included in the number that you're looking at in the operating budget. We are looking for the best way of reflecting how it's going to be paid for. And the question is, how is it going to be paid for? How are, how are these positions going to be paid for? They will be paid for through the receipts reserved for appropriation. Um, we also, as you know, have a revolving fund, the ambulance revolving fund. What we're going to do is, based on how it was set up, we will move some balances from that fund into the receipts reserved for appropriation for the purpose of covering the two firefighter positions. So like, for us, it's, it's, we still have to make a decision in terms of how we reflect that in the budget. So, so that would be this year, but then next year it would move into the fire department's budget, correct? Those, those two FTEs? No, they will continue no. to be funded through the receipts reserved for appropriation. Okay. So the um, increase in personal services here is just contractual obligations? Contractual. Okay. So getting back to the funding is this using the, re the revolving fund, is that sustainable or just that we have money in there this year? Is that something that we'll be able to rely on? It's going to be at equilibrium, so to speak? It, it, yeah. It, it's. Um, I, I'm realizing, in fact, Chief, this is a new group of appropriation committee members. Mm -hmm. um, we may want to just walk them through the calculations that we made and socialized with the previous appropriations committee as well as board of selectmen. There's a steady income stream from the ambulance services. Sure. So we um, we had uh, we probably brought in, in the area of four hundred fifty to four hundred seventy thousand dollars over the last four or five years. Um, we did some modeling where we would uh, supplement some overtime, supplement 
uh, some of the police response, supplement some expenses, and uh, supplement stipend, and uh, two firefighter positions theoretically. So that's we've been doing that since about 2003. Um, we just literally this week did a lot of modeling. I, um, I, before I came here, I had taken some work that Todd did in um, rough numbers. It looks like with the two firefighters, you could um, run a sustainable model based on what we see for revenues. We're just going to go over probably 515 this year. And um, the only bump we had at all was back when the, um, in 2009, when they did the change for health care, um, our revenues dropped. And that wasn't even foreseen by us. So we've seemed to have leveled off and now started an incline again, just based on call volume. Um, and we're hoping with the um, additional staffing, we'll pick up some of the calls that we don't get and get some revenue there. It's, it's small money, but it would, that should make it so that the, it's um, going upwards in the sustainable. So you're, you, when you said four, 450000 it was 450000 a year back four, five, for the last four or five years. Three. And now yeah. you're looking at over, a little over 500000 Yep, and I'd just be happy to pass out and, um, just kind of an example of what the revenues might look like if you wanted something. Just sure. to kind of take a peek at this and yep. like annual revenues okay. and you can kind of see the trends. So but since 2009, um, when we set our budget up in 2009, we were actually projecting about 550, and that was kind of when this health care did its switch and reimbursement, Medicaid and Medicare, which is about half of our customers. So <coughs> since then, we've kind of hovered in that range. We had a number of 470 designed to supplement our budget. A few times we ran short, and we got through the budget um, with what we had, but um, now it seems to, between last year and this year, it's like we're trending up again. So I think you asked, you answered the question I was about to ask about the rates of reimbursement that we cannot request more. It's based on preset Medicaid, Medicare, for, you know, a large <coughs> number. Of the yes. Calls, we have no control over that. Yeah, about half of our customers fall into that category, and. Um, <coughs> We, and then we base our billing for private insurance off of that. And even there, if there's a certain level you can go to, we're right in about the midstream level of uh, what our neighbors bill at. Um, we've done a little bit of talk. There's a, you have an opportunity potentially to um, raise rates. Um, trying to think of uh, I'm answering all of your question there. Yeah, yeah. Just, just looking for, I know this has been a stress point you know, within the fire system sure. and, and how, what are the different options to, to help alleviate that? Um, Part of the health care change, there are more customers that ended up into this um, Medicaid, Medicare type of coverage in the system in the last five years. That seems to trend up a little bit. So we've probably gone from, say, 40%, where I think we're just over 50 last year. Um, and then the other pieces are private insurance and then something like auto insurance for accidents and things mm -hmm. like that, that it gets covered. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny when you bring in an over 55 community, you think it's going to save money because there's no school children, but if then you've got to cover them for public services and the reimbursement it, exactly. is high. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's a little bit of a drawback. Yeah. And it's hard to model on certain versions of it. Um, mm -hmm. It's not profitable. We right. actually take a loss. So all of the things that come from that, um, the ambulance fund sounds like it's more operational and not capital though. So I know I had the question of could we pay for the new ambulance through the revolving fund? Is that, that was calculated out oh, of okay. that. Yep. And I did, in, when I did the modeling I told you about today, I did like look at our capital plan for the next ambulance mm -hmm. and I plugged that in. I plugged in kind of, this was real rough just today. I yep. met with Todd and we did some stuff, but it looks sustainable based on the conversations we've had. Okay. So how many firefighters or, or EMTs are being paid out of the ambulance fund now? It was, it was a conceptual two positions, and we literally just had a number of 50,000 for each position, and it, was, it, it just stayed steady at that number. Um, because the cap of what we can do out of that fund was at 470, and we didn't adjust it every year because we just kept a cap since the 2009. Mm -hmm. So we didn't like adjust it. It just kind of conceptually we said we'll cover this piece on two firefighters. Mm -hmm. 
hope I answered it. <laughs> you know, the, yes, in, in, in fact, the way it worked was there was an agreement between the, may have been the Appropriations Committee back then, yep. well before our time, um, that theoretically you will build it into the calculation of the expenditures under the revolving fund to firefighter positions. In practice, the salaries for those positions were reflected in the operating budget. Right. Okay. Yeah, it was just like a supplement. Yeah. Any other questions on, on the budget? Okay. We want to go to the <coughs> capital articles next. List is a communication system. So the communication system basically has to do with Verizon has um, discontinued uh, extending and now they're shutting down their copper lines. Most of our repeaters uh, for police, fire, DPW, the system that allows the town to communicate is all connected with their copper lines. So we have to transition over to um, some form of a fiber. So we're, we have some town coverage um, and then there'll be some lease lines and there's a cost to uh, doing that conversion. In that process, the police have um, one receiver site that's over in Holliston. So this, the expense of using that piece of fiber is pretty significant. We also realized we had a weak area for police and fire over to the uh, Southboro end of town. So we've done some uh, communications with Kinder Morgan. They have a large tower up on uh, Wilson Street in uh, Legacy North. And um, it tentatively we're set to um, put uh, some of our equipment there and get rid of the equipment in Holliston so there'll be some efficiencies there. Um, I just got a response back from um, for his communications today. They're the ones doing our analysis. It's been bogged down a little bit because every single community in Massachusetts is going through this same process. So Verizon's screaming they're gonna shut the lines down and we're asking the vendors to pick it up if they can. So today, he just talked to me about the number that I have here. He's, it's not finished yet, but um, I gave you 100,000 initially. It's probably gonna be somewhere in the area of 110 to 115, but I still think there's some chances to come back down into that 100 range. There's just some unknowns that we have in the quote. So, um, but we're pretty close so with that number now that it's a real number. The only thing it's absent is there'll be some cost depending on whether we use town fiber or whether we have to lease some fiber down the road. So that's kind of the unknown. And is I'm this a one time thing? Go ahead, no, you go ahead. Is this a one-time thing, or you'll need to do some incremental later years as well? <clears throat> the upgrade that you are doing, is that complete, or there will be subsequent? So that should complete the project, and then, and then the only remaining cost that isn't on that sheet is I haven't gone, um, and Josh will probably be doing the work of just what it might be when we decide whether we're, we may lease a line or use the town fiber, say, from the schools. We have a piece there. There's a little bit of work there that we still got to patch up. Um, if we're able to use town fiber, and Norm and I are working on a couple other options that we might be able to use, um, that if we get some lines run that's town fiber, then you would get rid of that leasing cost. So we're just trying to see what we can pull off for you. Did we hear about copper last year? Do we, Do we hear about That's when we started receiving indications oh, okay. yeah, right. that this was coming down the pike. It was it just at this process yeah. when we were getting our first letters. I was like, copper's coming, but we didn't know okay. anything yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious, you mentioned about some, um, I think, system saving through Holliston's equipment? For Holliston? For yeah. Holliston. So that Holliston site, in order to switch over to do this fiber, would be very expensive. So we're going to get rid of the Holliston site. We're going to discontinue using it. And that's where this Kinder Morgan Tower. Um, we'll solve for halls 
to plus it'll work on an area that's been a challenge for us. So um, whenever we get down to Wedgwood Drive, the back of the State Park, that's me. the Mass Pike 495, <laughs> um, that's me. there's a little spot in there that we just, if we go into somebody's basement, mm -hmm. we lose communication. Mm -hmm. So um, we're, we think this will resolve it. So that's, that's I the- I fully support it. The, <laughs> the, the, the extra. That's good. You need to cover it. Yeah. Any other questions on the uh, communication system? Okay, next <coughs> is the uh, Deputy Chief Fire Inspector Carr. All right. I appreciated the uh, tenure capital project plan. That was really helpful to see that and see things spread out. My so, pleasure. Mm -hmm. It helps me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me just get through my quotes here. How's your ladder doing? Wonderful. <laughs> really, it's not going good. It's going to last twice as long than originally anticipated. There's a, <laughs> I don't want to make any promises because that's how you jinx it. You know, but, um, you know, I asked towards 2022, I think we can look at getting another year or two out of it. It's so far, but I, I feel like I'm going to jinx it if I say that. <laughs> um, okay, so the car is a, on a year and everything. It's a 2009, has 40,000 miles. Uh, one of the challenges with dark cars is they tend to have a lot of idle time. I had this car for several years and I live right near the fire station. Though that's the other piece of the low mileage, but the, the use is still there. Um, it's treated us wonderful. It actually is in fairly good shape, um, but it's important to, for the uh, deputy being the operations officer to make sure he's got a vehicle that's very reliable. So. Um, following the capital plan, this is the year, the timing is right to do it. Our evaluation of that is we were considering uh, trying to push it out a year, but it would really help us to keep this car versus trading it in and uh, keep it in service for two years with our uh, fire prevention officer that we created last year. It, um, I do have an alternative. He could use a uh, pickup truck that we have that's a little larger, but this car would be perfect for him, and it would leave that pickup tr a truck available for uh, the role that it currently has. So we had some dialogue around that. It would work wonderful. I don't anticipate adding another piece to the capital plan based on this. I'm evaluating the pickup truck and our brush truck that are due in the next two to three years, and uh, I actually think I'll be able to consolidate down to one at that point. So I don't expect to be coming back to you and saying I need a extra uh, vehicle in the plan. I'm going to try to just make it even at that point. <clears throat> Any other questions on the truck? No. Next is the ambulance. The ambulance I have here. Right? Ambulance. Yeah. And the ambulance will be paid for from the revolving fund okay. transferred to the receipts reserved for appropriation. <laughs> so the ambulance is uh, our A2. Again, it's low on the mileage. It's in fairly good shape. It has some factors that I really evaluated hard this year where um, four years ago, we bought an ambulance that had a power stretcher and a power lifting mechanism, and it has been fabulous for our employees. I wasn't, we, um, when we bought this ambulance, they weren't quite ready, and we really needed an ambulance, so we bought an ambulance that has a manual stretcher. Um, the new ambulance with the power <laughs> stretcher and the power lift, it's really for the employees. Um, I say to people, my back is a nightmare because I did a manual stretcher for 20 years, and it's just mm -hmm. nice for our employees to be able to do this conversion. I'm not able to pull it off with the existing ambulance. I tried to evaluate whether I could um, just do an upgrade. It's about $45,000 worth of equipment that you put into it, and the upgrade, they said, they weren't sure that it would work right, and I said, I don't dare invest that kind of money into a, an existing ambulance. It just made sense to get rid of it. In addition, the new ambulance that we have, we got four-wheel drive versus drop-down chains, and that has also turned into a major success story. 
driving around Hockington were fairly hilly. Trying to use chains when you're transporting people doesn't work as well as it works good with the fire trucks. That's what they all have now, but for an ambulance, it hasn't worked very well. So um, for those reasons, I just am asking to do this ahead of schedule. Um, as I said, the, the money in our design with the revolving fund is um, there. Uh, talking to Norman, so. Is there any trade value for the? Uh... So the we did make a couple of the the number I got on this quote is um, a very good number, um, and I talked to two dealers that would be um, potential dealers that we look at, and their their offering right now is like forty thousand dollars. So. That's not great. I'm mm -hmm. actually not happy with that, but that's the number that I got. So okay. um, we're evaluating that. Um, I'm hoping that somebody, I'm starting to shop around that there is an yeah. ambulance that if somebody was looking for a backup ambulance, it would be fairly good. Mm -hmm. I evaluated it for us also just to maintain it, but just currently <coughs> with the, the one station, and there is a savings in our capital plan when we pulled it out five years ago. We moved some equipment onto our fire truck Currently, if I have some extra staff, um, there's not enough to staff three ambulances right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, currently, if we drop one and there was a second medical, the engine is rated as an ambulance. It has all the paramedic equipment in it. If the staff is there, they can get to the response. And then for those few occasions, our neighbor could come over and help us. Mm -hmm. So it's not a ton of money, but there are savings using that model right now. Mm -hmm. I think five years from now, when the next ambulance rotates around, and if we're talking about another station at that point, it's a different discussion. You used to have three ambulances, right? We did. And, okay. And that's there, where... There were two that were always running and then one with something went into the shop kind of thing. Yep. And there's two, two schools of thoughts. Um, there's some fire chiefs that look at me and say, I can't believe you don't keep a third ambulance. But we only have so much square footage and there is capital costs. I was that... the When you keep it in the rotation, it's got to be licensed. It's got to have a monitor. It's got to, the, the drug box has to be rotated and um, there's some cost to it. So, and the, we didn't have the staff to use it. So it's only for that time when the second, one of the ambulances was down and then we had a second medical that it was needed. So mm -hmm. that will start to get challenged with the increased volume. And that's why I tell you, you might see me in the next rotation say, now it's time to keep one. I don't think this is the ambulance necessarily to do it. I'll let you know if it changes again for forty thousand um, dollars. If we get a year from now, we might talk about that and see whether we truly want to trade it in at that point. Yeah. So just to clarify, so right now you have three ambulances. Uh, this is going to be the fourth one, but then we are going to plan to trade in one. So it'll stay at three. Is there? Yeah, we actually only have two. Oh, okay. yeah. So we we did uh, we did have three for a while. Yeah. Um, that was kind of um, we did some downsizing. We're right now in our fleet where. We have one less pump, one less ambulance, and we've added the ladder truck. But it, and it does help in that capital planning um, if you're able to keep the fleet down. My my problem right now is an equipment. It's staffing, so um, we're really good in the equipment, but it it doesn't do it. There's nobody to get in it. Um, it's just not doing us any good. So so I also just need a little clarification. Um, and I thought that the additional staff was for the new ambulance. The new ambulance. I thought that was to be taking a you know extra shift in the the ambulances. What was the extra so notice? currently we have two ambulances. One of them is staffed at the paramedic level. You have right now. I have two paramedics, a shift all the way around. Okay. I have some shifts with the company officer and starting to have a third paramedic. And again, this part of the model makes it. It takes in our region. You have to have two paramedics on an ambulance to provide. ALS service, advanced life support service. So that's a goal of ours. The the number of calls that we have, um, we did a little over 1,100 medicals this year. Okay. Um, there was a, oh my glass, it's somewhere here, it's a, it was about 200 uh, medical emergencies um, are a second <coughs> medical um, that, that we don't have paramedic staffing for. Okay, so it'll free up one of the firefighters who goes back to firefighting instead of doubling up on in the ambulance? Is that what you're, you saying you had two two paramedics and then another shift was split, and now you are staffing the full? Sure, so, the, 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 my, my yeah, the way we weight. staff, 
so basically the way we staff right now is half of the time <coughs> I have five firefighters on duty and half of the time I have four. Okay. During the day we have some impact positions which has strengthened us. Yeah. So in our current model, the second ambulance is getting covered during this Monday through Thursday. During the day I have enough paramedics. Okay. Um, picture now when I talk to you about the rest of that staffing, the times when it's down to four and there's there's two paramedics. So there might be two firefighters left and the second ambulance may go out with two firefighters on it, but they're basic EMTs. And the level of service we're trying to provide, it's truly the gold standard now is having a paramedic go to your house, evaluate you, and, and, and if you're sick, they can treat you. They don't have to call for help. Um, okay. You don't want that weight in there. So we're trying to get to that point. Um, the number of calls, the increased number of calls we've had in the last three years, um, it's clear that we need it, it's just when can we afford it. Okay, so the additional staffing is for paramedics? They'll be hired paramedics. It's all okay. I ad advertise for is paramedics. Um, then I don't want to say it's great to have retirement, but some of the EMTs that have retired, we might add a paramedic inside our attrition, which is a nice thing for the ambulance. You lose a little bit of the experience, it might be great on the fire side, but um, for some of the employees that have been there for a while to go out to paramedic school, it was a, a big task to ask for, so. Okay. Chief, just to be clear, they will be hired with paramedic qualifications and can still be firefighters. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So their, their, their okay. soul is isn't a paramedic. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. My, the model of this budget is for every single incident to send an effective response force. So I take every single incident, I break it down to if it was a medical, then the, you're trying to send four people, two basics and two paramedics. That's a national standard. It's a flow. They can handle every call. They don't need to wait for help. Same with a fire call. You know, general, most of our fire calls might take four firefighters to go. It has to do with um, initial attacks with hazardous environments and safety regulations. And OSHA, by the way, I just got a memo two weeks ago, is coming into our fire service now. So these mm -hmm. are some of the challenges we're going to have. Um, you literally need to have a certain number of people to go to work. You know, we're going to face something in the next couple of years where they start to say, you can't go to work yet. I dread that day. Um, we. Uh, we have great crews, they do whatever they have with the staff and they have, but someday somebody's going to yell at us. Um, but I do that for every, whether it's firefighters, for, for medicals, which has been the, the, the uh, we dropped number of fire responses slightly last year. Mm. We just had a substantial raise in medical emergencies with some of the facilities we've added, um, just uh, it's stuff that I didn't even project coming <coughs> this year, so I'm kind of scrambling a little bit. Very clear answer. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? It's more a question for Norman. Is there because there being this would be paid for out of um, the revolving fund through a, a, an appropriate reserve for appropriation? Is there any special vote at town meeting? Is a special kind of motion for it? Or is it just? It, it will be reflected as a funding source in the general budget okay. motion. Yeah. Okay. So it's just a regular simple majority. N nothing two thirds needed for this one. I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah. I have a general question, just uh, in terms of the ambulance and the two ambulance usage. Uh, can you give a sense of uh, what is the kind of percentage wise uh, number of incidents when you have both the ambulances at work at the same time? It's about. It was right around twenty percent. Yeah. yeah, I'm just anticipating if you do not have a third backup, um, that is the number that would be impacted at issue. Like if you don't have the third ambulance. So the number of times we'd have, a, I, I think we were probably around 16 was the number for a third ambulance type of a thing. And I, again, that's kind of a number where um, we're not going to be able to be staffed for everything all the time. So that when you use your neighbor, that you know, if we're using our neighbor for the 200 and some odd, 300 and some odd calls, that's that's overusing your neighbor. For when we're talking about that third call, that's that's kind of when your neighbor comes in. That's where our mutual aid agreements come in, and that's probably you look to the community and say we're doing the best we can, mm -hmm. but somewhere you got to draw the line. So. That's why I'm saying to you, it's time for the second ambulance to have an, uh, so that we're staffed enough so that there's paramedics, there's enough of them on duty. Both ambulances can go out, there's some support crew still. Um, mm -hmm. The third one, we're gonna have to wait and let it 
come Bar forward. Thank you. Any other questions? No. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Good night, folks. <laughs> yeah, I think we're about out of time. You have to come back tomorrow. That'd be at the end of that. Come back tomorrow at 9:15. All right. All right. Next is uh, DPW. We have John Westover. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good, Good evening. evening. Yeah. I'm all yours. What can I answer? So let's start with the budget. When does the new place open? The new place is open. Is it? See yes. how far behind I am. <laughs> yes. Okay. You live it's over right. towards that way, don't no, you? No, but I go, drive. I always go out of town. <laughs> I figured once you can see the sign that says uh, Hopkinton DPW, it's not blocked. It's open. <laughs> so how long have you been open? <laughs> so I moved in there December 6th, and we've been okay. moving our operations over. And um, with the storms and everything, I would say the second week in January, we had everything relocated over oh, there. Okay. We haven't done an open house yet because we didn't want to do that with the potential for storms and have uh, See, all kinds that's of. That's why activity. I didn't know. I hadn't gone yeah. to the open house. So. That's why you didn't know about it. <laughs> it's nicely lit and kind of glowing in that area. <laughs> <laughs> but your white metal is still over on Fruit Street. Yes, it is. Yeah. I mean, I looked around your building trying to drop off metal. Was it the last Saturday of the month or the first? It's the last Saturday. Last Saturday of the, Saturday of the month. month. I'm like, there's nobody mm. here. Mm. <laughs> just, just a point for anybody watching. <laughs> Go to first <laughs> <street. laughs> <Metal. laughs> public service announcement. <laughs> okay, just bring it up the budget. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, oh, I know. On the um, in the public works section, there's a lot that's been reallocated. Yes. Yes. Is that all sort of coming? Tell me. Well, I know where it came from because there'll be things that don't have anything anymore, like waste collection, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. So where is that falling now? Under expenses, we were one of the uh, one of the few, maybe only departments that had all of our line items appropriated separately, right. which made it very difficult for um, transfers at the, at the end of the year, as an example. So what we've done is we've consolidated all of our expenses, but for a couple, uh, for example, snow and ice is not consolidated, but we've consolidated um, many of our expenses into just an expense line item. The values are are somewhat different, but in, in general, we've we've consolidated those budget centers. So when you look at uh, a four hundred and fifty-two percent increase, uh, <laughs> yes. that, that, that that's the explanation. Which one is a four hundred fifty-two percent increase? Highway, highway the highway four twenty-two. The yeah. highway yeah, from four yes. hundred forty-two thousand. Yeah. That's correct. But if you look down below, sidewalk maintenance went down 50,000. Pavement management went down 351,000. Stormwater system went down 370,000. Lake Maspinock weed control went down 60,000. So that's $1.2 million that went up into highway expenses. Okay. And I'm assuming same with the waste collection disposal with the million dollars down there on the next page. Mm -hmm. uh, on the next page, absolutely correct. So are all the items deleted adding up to the increase in expenses? Is it yes. A, so there's nothing that's been cut or, or added? That hasn't been added. Mm -hmm. So the, are, you, are you asking if there were increases in any of those cost centers? Increases or were any items cut? I mean, to the benefit of uh, the public, we used to have, uh, you know, you got a lot, an itemized of what was there is weed control there. So now, in the future, we're not going to see weed control as a separate item, or uh, it's all just going to be expense one line to two million dollars. Yes. It may be helpful um, if you look at the budget, Department 422 Highway. Mm -hmm. um, compare the FY 
2018 appropriation column with the FY 2019 column. Um, sidewalk maintenance, pavement management, stormwater systems, with control, they're all zeroed out in 2019. John, there is an increase in pavement management. Yes. In FY19. And I think th that answers part of your question, i.e. <coughs> The, the expectation in terms of how you'll approach the budget is that you will maintain the same expenditure levels for most of the items except pavement management, which goes up by... We went up $100,000. Yeah. So my, my comment was a little bit, I was looking forward mm -hmm. budgets, not just this mm -hmm. one, where it was kind of nice to have the breakout, so we know if we spent more on pavement management or, you know, you added weed control, like in future budgets, we're not gonna see any of those items because we're comparing last year's to this year's, but when we do the F year, fiscal year 20 budget, all we're gonna see is one line expense up a certain amount, but we won't have the breakout that we have previously had. So the budget that I submit has all of those line items laid out and I know the increases in each which I can describe for you uh, so if you look at FY19 FY20 and it's up $120,000 mm -hmm. I know exactly where those increases are and I'm happy to to describe and explain those within okay. for example if we look at the FY18 um, highway expenses at $442,000 there are a lot of separate line items in there that are not broken out. Mm -hmm. So it's just a consolidation of many, uh, right. of, a, of a broader scope of expenses that are being combined. So I guess if you looked at all the new, all, if you took in 18 and add up everything that's now in 19's expenses number, mm -hmm. I don't know what the increase is, but what are the significant drivers besides the 100000 for the yep. increase in pavement management? Happy to describe those for you. Uh, the $100,000, that will bring us, with the combination of Chapter 90 funds and the pavement management, which we typically did at $351,000, that brought us to a million dollar investment in our pavement management system. Mm -hmm. This will bring us to a $1.1 million investment in our pavement management. So that's, that's one of the drivers, that's a $100,000 increase. Um, we have a $7,000 increase in line painting, which will help to offset not only the rising costs of paint and the labor associated with that, but also as we add streets, as we add intersections, as we add uh, vehicle travel lanes, that, that increases our cost. Uh, police details are up $5,000 because of increased rates and also the increased number of uh, amount of work that we're doing out in the streets. Uh, there's a couple of other smaller ones. One that's gone up is uh, fuel, gasoline, up by $12,300. And that's because what we're doing is we've consolidated all of the fuel purchases into one. Mm -hmm. So that reflects the increase uh, of fuel that we're now purchasing for police, for fire, for schools, for senior center. Uh, we did have a, a decrease of $10,000 in our equipment and supplies. Uh, we didn't believe that we needed that uh, with, our, with our new facility. Um, and then there are $39,000 worth of contractual increases in rubbish disposal and then recyclables collection and trash collection. So at, a, at a, one of the joint meetings um, when uh, the selectmen were asking for cuts, <coughs> you said um, you brought up uh, hazardous, hazardous waste collection and recycling. Is any of, has any of that been cut or that's all still there in the next budget. That was the theoretical discussion that we had around. Correct. Correct. <laughs> uh, our, our budget was cut by 200 and $258,843. Um, that is reflected in 
basically, we had $100,000 cut from the payment management. We had $50,000 cut from, we were looking for an initiative where we could refurbish our vehicles before they got to the point where we had to replace them. We cut that $50,000. Um, there was also a uh, $15,000 cut in tree removals. We were seeking an increase this year be just because of the, 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 the number of trees that were being called to remove. And when they're identified as hazards, we can't let them sit. We have to take them down. Did they get blown down on their own during the yeah, storms? That's right. Um, <laughs> so that, passed, that the others passed the stress test. Exactly. <laughs> that was cut fifty thousand dollars. So those are those are some of the major cuts that were made. Okay. So originally, the um, the pavement management plan was part of the capital projects. Has it been now? Is it in the budget? Am I just not reading this correctly, or? Yeah, the, there was a scrivener's error. Uh, error? Scrivener's error. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not part of the capital budget process. Okay. It's only in the operating budget. It's built in, okay. Yes. Okay. I was going to ask uh, how comfortable you are that there wouldn't be any cost in any of these categories this year? There won't um, be any. For the um, sidewalk maintenance, pavement management. I think pavement, you already mentioned there's some additional okay. cost. Yeah, that so how comfortable am I that there won't be any costs? Uh, that there won't be any costs. So there, there will be costs, and again, those, those centers, sidewalk maintenance, pavement management, stormwater system, uh, trash collection, those have all been funded, but within the expenses of operational highway. Yeah. Correct. Oh. They got rolled up. Rolled up. Oh. Right. Yeah. So I'm confident that there will be expenses <laughs> and all. That's what I said. Okay, so there's a... And a, a quick question on the weed control. That's also rolled into that, or there's no further. That is rolled that? into that, correct? Okay. And the previous sixty thousand was for a survey or a study. Is that the sixty thousand dollars is an amount that was proposed two years ago at town meeting, and it started off as what it would take to spread uh, herbicides in an area of the lake. The town meeting had a, had a great debate. Very yep. long debate. We <laughs> kept the $60,000. We took out the idea that it would be used for herbicides, but it was to be used for uh, public education, for uh, the help of, uh, of a limnologist, a certified lake professional, um, and a, a couple of other things. In the first year, we only used short of $15,000, so we returned the majority of the funds. We're going to find the same thing in FY18. Um, so we did a, an extended drawdown of eight feet in the lake two winters ago. That had a dramatic effect on weeds. We had very little weeds this past summer, so we didn't have to do anything beyond, you know, our our, our sampling and our evaluation of of the lake. So this year we'll be able to return a lot of those funds as well. So the sixty thousand dollars is earmarked for should we have to do anything and herbicide is uh will require a public hearing but that's only one of many of the things in our toolbox that we can use to address weeds okay. thank you you're welcome and i know the stormwater system went up high last year because there were <coughs> new regulations that came into play is that is is that covered i mean the jump from 150 to 370, was that adequate to cover what you need to do? And is there a further jump that's in this budget? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the, that was for the anticipated rollout of the new NPDES MS4 permit from, D, from the EPA. <laughs> wow. That's not enough of an alphabet <laughs> soup for you. Uh, but that permit was not rolled out. It was expected to be, again, rolled out this July 1st. They're not, they're not they're not confident that it will come out. So what we've, we've returned some of those funds. We have used some of the funds for the catch basin cleaning. Mm -hmm. We've used some of those funds for preparation for the next permit when it comes out. So we're doing mapping with a consultant. Um, we're doing a couple of other things, but we're, we're not expending all of that $370,000. Some of that will be returned to the general fund. 
at but the that's end of still this in the it's still part of the fiscal so, 19 budget then correct so we've kept it at three hundred and seventy thousand dollars with the anticipation that that permit will be rolled out at some point in fy19 that has been i think five years epa has pushed it and pushed it and pushed it and john it, it it needs to be said over and over we're budgeting 375 but of the few test communities um, that partially implemented this permit the expenses were substantial mm. so yeah. we we have the dubious <coughs> distinction of being within three uh river basins mm -hmm. and each one of those river basins has different testing requirements they have different maximums for different constituencies in in the the effluent coming out of all of our pipes uh, so the expense to us and the, the, the testing and the monitoring is unprecedented compared to the other communities. We're, we're in a consortium, Central Massachusetts Regional Stormwater Coalition. coalition. Uh, we have the most of all of those communities, there are 31 communities, we have the most that we have to test for and monitor because of the fact that we're in three different river basins. Any more questions on uh, public works? Uh, Operating uh, budget or capital too? Well, we haven't gotten into capital. Okay. But the next question is: Do we go to water and sewer in terms of their operational, or the enterprise funds, or just do capital articles first? We could do water and sewer now. So I know. Okay. I think well, I think the, the big message, John, is these are two enterprise funds. Mm -hmm. have substantial have um, confirmed retained earnings and as in past years we will be balancing the budget by dipping into the retained earnings so the retained earnings are still healthy uh, or uh, enough that you you're not for budget purposes yeah, yes. yeah but not sufficient for other purposes That's the questions on the enterprise funds. <laughs> so. What's the reason for street lighting expense or cost going down? It's thanks to yeah, th thanks to yeah. Uh, the town engineer. I think he may have covered this on Monday. He secured an, a grant that converted the lights to LED. Oh, okay. okay. That was it. Streetlights, though they fall under the, the umbrella of public works, they're actually managed by the okay. town engineer. Are they all replaced at this point? Or I this is so. what the budget is? Yeah, I think so. <coughs> yeah, the street I've driven down is no I longer I a yellow glow. I have not paid attention. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Which, the one at the end of my street works. That's yes. the key. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't used to. That's good saving, 32%. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the next one, 426 traffic control, that does fall under the director of public works, and that is up three thousand dollars only because we have uh, we have some additional sign, excuse me, additional signals out there, and the signals that we, the other signals that we have are aging, and we're finding that they're becoming more and more problematic, and we have to call in consultants to do the necessary evaluation and repairs. When so is the new? Oh, sorry. So you're saying this is—is is this including the new traffic light at uh, Chestnut? Chestnut. Is that part of the increase? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. When I was going to ask, when is that coming online? So we are. Here. I know. <laughs> we are putting that out to. Sorry. <laughs> 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 we are putting that out to bid uh, at the end of April. Okay. We will open bids end of May, and construction will start in June. Okay. I know. It's too late for me. <laughs> we'll send you pictures. Okay. <laughs> May 11. It's the day after the last day of town meeting. What time Friday Friday after? after. <laughs> okay. Are we are ready for capital articles at this point? So as in the past, I have some handouts if that would be helpful. Sure. I don't know if you've received them. 
think yeah, we, we got the, them. We, yes. Okay. I think I saw pictures though. So the, the town meeting slides. Oh. Oh, let's see it. Oh, no. <laughs> we like pictures. You're right. Yeah, the, the only Thank picture you. we got was the ballot box. <laughs> the other. I was expecting Chief Slam to walk up with a picture of the new truck he wanted. Thank you. Yeah, we had more than the one he just wanted to replace. Any of us? Yeah. I wanted a picture of him too. You know, the paramedics. Oh, good message. <laughs> so, do you want me to walk through them as they appear here, or do you have a different yeah. order that you want to follow? But we have the. Uh, Mm -hmm. On the uh, in the budget, we have a list of the uh, capital articles. Okay. Right. If you want to identify them, I will point you to which slides you yeah, describe them. I have oh. to find the page. Chapter ninety was the first one, so that that is what it is. And pavement management plan, we already just so the multi-purpose tractor, but that's not happening. No, so you yes. can scratch that oh. one oh, off, really? and you can scratch yeah. the lower left-hand sidewalk plan. You can oh, scratch okay. both of those off. Okay. Is is it possible to see this? I know there's there's a five-year sidewalk plan, right? Or are we just doing it in phases? So I have become the uh, the lead on sidewalks. Okay. Um, but it's it's based on both the master plan mm -hmm. and the survey that was done by the planning board. Okay. So when I say a five a five-year plan. Uh, like the last one that we did, mm -hmm. it's really looking at the master plan and that survey, putting together so that we have an economy of scale, putting together the sidewalks that were identified as priorities, and looking at a five-year design and construction period for those. Okay. So if we're looking at a five-year plan, the segments that are shown here, those mm -hmm. are the ones that were identified uh, by the planning board. Okay. Based on the survey. So. When we first had a five-year plan, mm -hmm. it was maybe only five years ago. That was the Ash Street and in front of Center School. And I thought that that was supposed to take a full five years to implement, and then we would go on to the next segment. And it seems like this is coming up closer, shorter time frame than, than what was originally anticipated. So shame on me we were able to construct five years worth of sidewalks in a four-year span um, so last year we brought forward the next phase which are the same sidewalks that you see here mm -hmm. uh, the budget couldn't support it last year it can't support it this year so okay. what we're seeing here is the next grouping of sidewalks again that were identified through the survey okay just just Curious because we do. I don't. Uh, cause we do borrow for the five. That is always a borrowing. Do we? Does anyone know off the top of their head? When we do the borrowing, is it a five-year borrowing? Because each each time it seems to be one point. It's about the same amount. You know, um, one point five or one point seven million dollars. Are we like paying off the previous one before we're borrowing for the next one, or are we adding into the? Because uh, I think this would be like the third. The second, the second or the third? I thought we went a little bit. No, we bit. just talked about it a few times. Yeah, no, we don't, we don't have the information now. We'll, we'll <coughs> respond by email. Okay. Yeah. Because I thought we went as far, you know, we did right around the center of town the first year, going down Ash Street, going down. Going in front of Center So we school. did, in that, five, uh, in that five year plan, there was Ash Street, mm -hmm. which we did in front of the schools. Yep. Uh, we did all the way out to Blueberry. Yep. We did a, a small piece on Blueberry. Yep. Uh, we did West Main Street. Yep. We did a small piece on Elm Street. We did a small piece on Wood Street. And we just completed uh, last fall the section on East Main Street. So that completes that five year plan. And that was all the original article? Yes. Okay. okay so so we've only had one article for sidewalks? In the past yeah. seven okay. years, yes. Okay, I thought we had like subsequent. I know. Ones. <laughs> we just keep hearing so, about it. So again, <laughs> there was a, there was a, there was a one point <laughs> five billion dollar town meeting appropriation, which yep. took us through four years worth of design and construction. Okay. Okay. Yeah. When did we do Hayden Row? Oh, that was like ten. Ten years ago. Ten years ago. Okay. That was kind of, that was kind of <laughs> <laughs> Now they yeah. want to do the other side. But oh, we're not doing that. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> so that. Do you have, you said the first one was chapter 90 and this is just a... Yeah. Yeah, I went to go in order and kind of jumped out of... So, yeah, the, the actually the one that we have in order is the uh, the F-550 dump. 
S13 or S30? S13. Well, going, oh wait, going back to the chapter 90, is that oh. because that was their accident? It's not, it's in the operational budget now? No. Or no, that was the pavement management. Your yeah, yeah. Okay, the pavement management. So we received six hundred and fifty thousand okay. dollars, give or take a couple of dollars, from the state, and those are the Chapter ninety funds. And this is an annual vote just to allow us to spend that six hundred fifty thousand dollars on pavement management. We've so is is that on top of the budgeting of pavement management, or in this funds it? This is the six hundred fifty thousand dollars from MassDOT. And then we supplement that with this year will be four hundred and fifty thousand dollars to bring us to one point one million dollars total investment in pavement management. I understand. Okay, great. No, I don't. The supplement for the four fifty is coming from where? Yeah, from that's in the general fund in the operating okay. project. All right. Yeah. Okay, so now we're on. Okay, now we're on. <laughs> the pavement management plan is out. The three fifty one, right? Right. Well, it's in the operational budget. It's in the operational budget, and it's four fifty one. Right. Right. And uh, next is the multi-purpose tractor, which, which is out. Which seems to be out. It's out. And so you'll just, if you need it, you'll hire a contractor or lease something again. I mean, there was a couple years ago where you, where you ended up hiring. I thought somebody to do the similar thing. We so hired. We two. Yeah. Now we have two. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have we have two machines. We hired folks to widen the roadway. Okay. With they had Throwing. snow blowers. Yep. We have since purchased our own loader mounted snow blower. Uh, it's it's difficult to find anyone who has equipment that will fit down a five and a half foot wide sidewalk. So the original request, which this is the second year in a row, is because after we snow plow all of our all of our roads, it can take twelve. 24, 36 hours of constant operation. And then we have to pull two of the drivers that have been working all those hours, put them in our two sidewalk machines, and that can take eight to 16 hours to complete all the sidewalks that we do. Um, we do approximately 17 miles of sidewalk, which is a growing network. We're gonna add another uh, five miles in the next three years. So Why are we at it? No. Let's <laughs> <laughs> not add them. And, and, and those <laughs> aren't sidewalks that that we're building on the sidewalk plan and subdivisions that are coming online. Uh, yeah. So we're looking to improve the efficiency of our cleaning of the sidewalks. We're looking to reduce the strain on the manpower. And we're also looking to uh, be able to, to clear more sidewalks. Without the addition of this, we're, we're going to be hard pressed to consider extending how many sidewalks we do. For example, Legacy Farm South, we're likely not going to be able to do that. This you don't, I don't think you did subdivisions for yeah. sidewalks. So we, uh, if they are within close proximity to the center of town and schools, we do. Okay. Um, but as, as subdivisions come on, as densities get greater, for example, in Legacy Farms, I'm sure there's going to be a request to have us clear those sidewalks without the ability to have more equipment to do those additional sidewalks. We're going to be hard pressed to to meet that request. And we don't get any funding from them, meaning legacy farms in this case. No. So I understand there's a request, but such as other subdivisions do have sidewalks, which you don't do. But do, how does Legacy Farms fit that criteria? Other than there'll be a demand for it, rather than the other developments have just given up. Uh, I, I think that it's the density of Legacy Farms, and again, the request hasn't come through. The residents there are used to having them cleared by the developer. So winter of 2018, 2019, I'm sure the phones are going to be ringing of why aren't you clearing our sidewalks? We're going to have 500 plus people down there that are, that are making that request. You're, you're absolutely Six correct. There are, there are <laughs> sidewalks that we don't clear. Of the 17 miles that we do, there's probably another 17 miles that we don't. Mm -hmm. So that will have to be the reality is we can't accommodate your request this year. Yeah. It sounds like there's room for negotiation with legacy farms probably Well when you do the new the new um, I can't, I don't know if it's all sidewalk, the whole the new legacy farms north road, that's a oh. that's a very long road. That's yeah. Oh yeah. I, Would you I do it all the way from where the houses are down to like Main Street to 
not this without the new equipment, we won't. No, I mean, that seems like a... <laughs> so we've already had requests. John, at this point, you may have to come back tomorrow. <laughs> the of the yeah, yeah, should we move floor. away from the sidewalk? Yeah, you keep going the sidewalk it's just the fascinating. Mount <laughs> <I know. Hippos laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next year's problem, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, so did we say it was S30? S13. S13, <laughs> thank you. Uh, this is $80,000 to replace a 13-year-old truck. It has 142,000 miles on it. It's integral to our snow plow operations. And in its lifetime, it's received $55,000 worth of repairs. And it was on the schedule, the 10 year replacement plan three years ago, but we were able to save it and salvage it and extend its life by three years by replacing the dump body on it. At this point, that was like 8000 right? It was $11,000. We did that for three different vehicles. Right. At this point, uh, the mechanicals of the, of the unit and uh, the, the frame and the stability of the frame are to the point where we can no longer extend its life. And how many dump trucks we have in total? Of this size, we probably have, this is purely a guess without looking at the, the, the fleet plan, but we probably have six of the, the one ton size. Of the larger size, I believe we have five. And they're all housed indoors now, right? They are all housed indoors. They are all washed uh, inside. They are all well protected. <laughs> so what is the expected life, the life expect expectancy of these new <coughs> vehicles that we get? This one ten is plus years. They already were ten plus years. Ten they? plus years. <laughs> <laughs> ten plus plus. Uh, well, this, this one says 13 years old, meaning it was 10 years old when it first came in, lasted 13 years. Wouldn't we expect much greater? We replaced the dump on it, though. Yeah, so you'd, okay. you, you would Three expect that the, the frame and that the, the, the body would last and be clean and be uh, rust-free, but when you get into the mechanicals, that $55,000 isn't paint, it isn't rust restoration, it's the, the transmission, it's the engine, it's the clutch, it's the brakes, it's, it's everything on. A lot of those are just routine repairs, but the routine repairs start to add up as the vehicle gets older. Yeah, and I was wondering, is that normal? Like for $80,000 vehicle, 55000 of repair costs? Is it normal? Right. It so is. You have in this town, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is if you continue to extend its life. Yeah. I see. Because, uh, yeah, it's almost like the same price or close to the price of buying a new one, right? Yeah. And unlike a residential vehicle, these are, they're working all yeah, the time, sure. every day. They're working in the worst of conditions. Mm -hmm. They're har carrying heavy loads. They're pushing heavy loads of snow. So they're under a lot of, a lot of duress. Right, yeah. I'm just thinking what would be the optimal kind of break even to replace it versus start stop uh, repairing like start re like replace sooner start replace sooner yeah. well we we have a 10 year we have a 10 year fleet management plan that lays out all of our vehicles and they are staggered through their lifespans but as every year when we bring forward a request of those vehicles that are on the list the budget can't support it so we have to we have to put on new bodies we have to extend this life we have Band to continue yeah. to, to but repairs, you're throwing good money after bad in trying to trying to keep it longer. Keep in yeah. mind, Shah Duel, that is this appropriations who makes a lot of the old recommendations That's over true. the last couple <laughs> of years. <laughs> <laughs> it's a large fleet. It's a four, it's a four million dollar fleet. So there's a lot of equipment that you know comes up, and they're they're not inexpensive pieces. Yeah. Uh, so we we. When the budget can't support it, we do the best we can to extend its life and make it another year. No, we have to that. Thank you. The comprehensive water or wastewater management plan is next. So this is one hundred ninety thousand dollars to update the town's two thousand four comprehensive wastewater management plan. And the comprehensive wastewater management plan is it's a planning tool. It's a ten year look ahead of what areas. Do we want a sewer in town? What are our sewer capacities? What areas are being developed that we need to have sewer in? So this will reassess areas in town of critical need for sewer service. It also satisfies a goal of the town's master plan, and this will be funded by the Sewer Enterprise Fund. So I had a question, and I think it's more for you, Norman, and, and I see its answer here, but I hadn't read it. <laughs> um, are the sewer and water 
uh, capital projects going to be paid out retained earnings or increases to the ratepayers for those projects? Are they already calculated into yeah. the uh, to the rate to the rates? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So, if you want, I can answer that. Okay, go ahead. So our, our rule of thumb is anything under $75,000 we pay for directly out of retained earnings. Mm -hmm. And we have one piece of equipment, which will be split between water and sewer. It's coming up. It's, it's yep. the backhoe. Mm -hmm. That will be paid for out of retained earnings. Okay. The other projects, because of their size and the impact that they'd have on retained earnings, we do borrowings. Okay. And those borrowings are factored in. The capital plan for all of those are factored into our five-year look ahead when we are evaluating our rates. Okay. Okay, let's see. So, do we need to go to the water sewer backhoe? If that's the next one you have. Mm -hmm. This is $126,800 to replace a 17 year old backhoe. The backhoe is used by the water and sewer divisions for emergency repairs, utility maintenance, etc. The replacement of this has been postponed for seven years. <coughs> Its controls are unsafe because they are loose and do not respond in a precise manner, which is essential when working alongside employees and fragile infrastructure like water, sewer, drainage, and gas. Uh, the rollover protection system is rotting. The bottom of the doors have rotten away. The swing pins are loose, etc. And this is to be funded 50-50 by water and sewer enterprise funds. What is the usual life for such vehicles? Ten years. Ten years. <laughs> yeah, and this is, this is used on a, on a daily basis, again, by the water and sewer department. Um, and it's, when we say that it's, it's no longer safe, that's really critical to have safe operations. Swing pins, what that means is the piece on the back that swings around, the holes where the pins go in to hold that in place, are so old and so worn that they, they become egg-shaped. So that whole apparatus, when you move it left to right, it, it just sways and it's, it's not safe, it's not precise in its operation, which is unsafe when there are employees standing next to it in the hole that are digging a trench when you're digging around gas lines and water lines and sewer lines. It's a 17-year-old piece of equipment and its time has come. So you'll get the question on the floor likely how do you know it's a 50-50 split between water and sewer? So that's an estimate based on its use in water repairs, in sewer repairs, uh, in clearing snow from water pump stations and sewer pump stations. Um, mm -hmm. we, we haven't, over its 17-year life and over the future, we, we don't track did you always get the question. I, I always do. <laughs> I always do. Do you think with the new facility log, the vehicles will last for 12 <coughs> years instead of 10 because it won't be up in the elements? Again, the, the, uh, is when we were talking about the, the one-ton dump truck, the, the, the items that we, can, that we can protect through washing and through keeping them inside, mm -hmm. those will extend. Yeah. Um, However, when you look at the mechanicals, th th that swing That's, pin yep. example, for example, uh, isn't, isn't going to change because it's inside and it's washed after it's used. Yep. Um, so the mechanicals are the things that will drive the replacements in the future. Mm -hmm. So we may get more for trade-in value, okay. um, but I mean, we won't get more than 17 years out of the next one, which we got out <laughs> of this one. <laughs> John, you did a nice job of... Um, summarizing the repair cost for others. Do you have a sense for the aggregate repair cost for this, or it's beyond 10 years? <laughs> uh, thank you for your compliment, but no, we don't have that. We can look to see if we have that information, and if we do, we'll, we'll provide it. Thank you. You're welcome. At, at this point, uh, this isn't meant to dismiss your question, but the the uh, the lack of safety on this and the, the rotted rollover bars on this the, the mm -hmm. safety issues are more of a concern than you know if it were if it were ten thousand dollars worth of repairs or two hundred thousand dollars worth of repairs it's just become unsafe. Uh, are you saying you can't repair the swing pins just by putting a sleeve in there, reboring, putting a sleeve and and tightening it up? That's already been done a couple of times. 
it's like a knee replacement. Ultimately, you have to get a hold of the knee. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. All right, any other questions on the uh, backhoe? Nope. I replaced Cedar Street water main. This is $620,000 to replace approximately 2,000 feet of water main on Cedar Street. It supplements $260,000 worth of design funds that were appropriated in FY16. The water main has had multiple breaks over the years, leading to costly repairs and increased water loss from the system. Portions of the, this replacement are under the pavement to be reconstructed as part of Mass DOT's Main Street project, and this is to be funded 100% by the Water Enterprise Fund. This is going from the center of town down to just, just about C Street. And if you picture from the center of town at the intersection of Main Street all the way down to in front of the post office, that is all work to be resurfaced under Mass DOT's Main Street corridor reconstruction. Mm -hmm. And if we don't repair that now, we'll never be able to repair it. Mass mm -hmm. DOT won't let us dig into that section of road. Mm -hmm. I thought that it was like five years or something. You can't dig into it or correct. Didn't we already replace Main Street? Didn't we already? Mm. I We've thought done some Street. of Main. This is Cedar. This is Cedar. Okay, so it doesn't include Main Street itself. It's no, right. it right. goes from the intersection of Main Street to the terminus, which is at the bottom of the hill. But we did Main Street from I want to say Pleasant down to that intersection almost to Hayden Road. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. For the water main a few years back. Yeah. 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 And it was in preparation for, for the, the Main Street Corridor project, yeah. <coughs> so it be one nice smooth pavement at the end. Of which? <laughs> the Cedar Street thing? <laughs> to Because I get on my bike and I go fast. <laughs> there would be bumps. <laughs> so I'm not sure where the, where the water main rests within mm -hmm. Cedar Street, mm -hmm. but like we did with Main Street, we will only patch the trench in a yes. little bit wider than the trench. Uh, that but trench on Main Street is one of the smoothest portions of yeah. Main Street. Yeah. Any other questions on that? Help me. Uh, Hayden, Hayden Row Water Main. So that's on the, the third page. Replacement of portions of Hayden Row Water Main. This is $1.6 million to replace 2,700 feet of 12 inch water main and 2,300 feet of 8-inch water main on Hayden Row. The existing water main is filled with tuberculate to the point where we are experiencing water quality issues and firefighting capabilities of the system are becoming compromised. And this is to be funded 100% by the Water Enterprise Fund. And two years ago, Thank you. We, have, uh, we appropriate funds every year that are geared towards water main repair, replacement, or design. This, this far outpaces the $280,000 that we do annually. And that was, wasn't that from College to Milford Town Line? College Street to Milford Town Line? Yeah, it's about, it's about the same, which is just over a mile. Where does so this, what's the stretch? Isn't it, now this is granite to Milford Town Line, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and this, this was identified in uh, a water study that was done probably 15 years ago as a section of water main that needed to be upsized. Mm -hmm. um, and again, tuberculate is when, when the debris inside the pipe starts to build and flushing no longer takes it out. So the size of the water main is decreasing. Uh, that tuberculate starts to, starts to affect the water properties. We don't have water quality issues there. It still passes all the DEP requirements, but we're finding, we're finding uh, elements in the water in our sampling that concern us. And because of the tuberculate and the, the reduction in the size of that pipe, it's, it's affecting water pressure and flow in that area, which is affecting the, it's compromising the firefighting capabilities. So now, does, does this impact the area that was just repaved? That's what I was just gonna say. So it does uh, for a portion of it, but if, like Main Street, what we'll do is we will patch the trench and uh, wider than the trench itself. And I think that we're probably three years in. So what we'll require, <clears throat> excuse me, we do allow for excavations within patches, excuse me, within pavement that's less than five years old, but we require uh, more stringent compaction. We require uh, different patching techniques 
So we will implement all of those in this so that you won't even notice at the end of the day that there's a, there's a, a patch there. And again, like the Main Street patch, that's part of the smoothest portion of the road. So if you do it correctly, and you, you, if the trench is four feet wide, God bless you, you go six feet wide so that it ties into the pavement around it and you get a much better finished pavement. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Next is uh, Pratt Farm Well Field Study. So that's also on that third page. It's $170,000 for the installation of three test production wells, the installation of observation wells, conducting an extended duration pumping test, submitting a notice of intent to the Hopkinton Conservation Commission, and submitting a DEP BRP WS19 pumping test report. All of those will bring this site through the DEP permitting process, and this is to be funded 100% by the Water Enterprise Fund. We have done, we, we purchased the land with the intent of it being for future water supply and uh, scouts. Uh, we have done a preliminary investigation of the land of some $20,000 to identify if it's even has the, the, the appropriate characteristics as far as depth to groundwater and soil types. And what the engineers found was that it does have those favorable characteristics. It is a favorable site for uh, further exploration. This will bring us up through the permitting process with DEP if it's found to have, uh, when we do the extended pumping duration test, if it's found to be able to supply enough water out of that, and when we do the observation wells around it, if it doesn't dry down the aquifer too much, if it's favorable, then we do the application of the, that uh, DEP BRP WS19 pumping test report to DEP, and that gives the town the authority and the ability to construct a pump station and water mains to connect that into our system. And it doesn't have the high iron and manganese? Correct. Uh, when they did their evaluation, uh, the, the aquifer is under all of the, our wells, our existing wells. There are wells one, two, three, and six. But because of the, the supply of surface water and groundwater into where each one of those wells draw from, they each draw from different parts of the aquifer, uh, this draws from a different section. Uh, wells one, two, and three, where we find the high, very high levels of iron and manganese, draws from a lot of the, the cedar swamp area, but this does not, so the engineers believe that the water quality will be better out of this well if it's found to have the characteristics that, that are determined when we go through that extended duration pumping test. Now, is this one coming out of retained earnings or a borrowing? So this would be a borrowing as well. Yeah. Again, the, the, the rule of thumb is $75,000. Okay. And then there'll be a follow-on phase, which will actually be, be building the well? Is that the next step? So those, the installation of three test production wells, that will be the necessary wells that will be used moving forward. So we don't put in three, three wells and then pull them out. Uh, so you, you build the pump station, you build the pumps, you, because this is a well field, you build the interconnecting pipes and you build the connecting infrastructure that reaches over to our existing main, which is uh, right around the Fruit Street, the Fruit Street site. So is that expected to be next year or two years or what? Depends on what we find when we do this test. I'm optimistic. I'm thinking it's going to be positive, but... Well, if... It, as are we based on the based on the preliminary testing that was done. Um, but if it is found to be favorable and the town decides that it wants to go forward, uh, very likely it will be next year FY20 or FY21 that will bring that forward. So with the large borrowings for the water from the Water Enterprise Fund, are water rates expected to increase significantly or? So that's part of the evaluation process that the, uh, our consultants are going through now. Mm -hmm. For both water and sewer, they look at a five-year plan. 
which includes operating expenses, revenues, and the capital plan, existing long-term debt, future debt. Um, so that all gets rolled in. And the rates are dependent not on any one of those, but all of those in the aggregate. So looking at my circus, do, not do my we monkeys have higher, anymore. Do we have higher costs? Uh, is it to replace some higher costs? Are we? Uh, I can't remember what from the Ashland Reservoir um, with the joint with Ashland. Are we kind of tailing off of that? So this will replace that, or is it on top of what we get? Or are we actually no longer utilizing that? I know wasn't there a plan that. Oh, right. So we're still evaluating our options with the town of Ashland. We're still looking forward to rewriting the existing intermunicipal agreement, which only has eight years left of its 25-year life. So we have we want to do that anyway. We want to partner with, with Ashland, who's our existing partner. We are reliant on that water supply that comes from Ashland. This won't fully offset, com offset thank you, mm -hmm. won't fully offset the Ashland. But if we can get uh, a quarter of a million gallons a day out of this well that's better water quality, that will reduce what we have to purchase from the town of Ashland. Okay. I think that's it, yeah. That's it. We've already gone over the five year cycle. There was, there was <laughs> one other. And we get into that. And, and the holder, we're the not holder. going to talk about because it's not no. even anywhere. <laughs> but we talked about S13. We didn't talk about S30. Oh, we yeah. did. No, we really didn't. I but mean, we, we, it's like a copy. It is a, it's a, so yeah. It's a copy. It had a new dump mm -hmm. body put on. Yep. Not quite as high in the uh, yeah. repairs. Correct. It's and really it's a year good. younger. Correct. That's why it's. Can yeah, we get another year? <laughs> 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 We're going for 17 new times. Are there any other questions on operating or capital? One other question. Uh, what is our snow deficit mm. to date? Mm. To date is, is right. Is, is it when is it in the budget? Did it snow last is week? It around 700 something yeah, thousand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How much? It's around 700 something thousand. Is that what we have in the latest? Uh, the latest model is. Does it end on April 1st? No. Yeah. It ends. I remember yeah, whether it was put it lower than 800 or you kept it. Did we need any snow removal the past storm or did the. Did, road, sorry, did, did we, we have any snow removal the past so. storm or did that all melt when it hit the. Yeah, it might be. Well, it depends on what you mean by the past storm. It snowed. It's not uh, just a few days ago. Right. And we didn't have to put down any treatment then. That's We've had two very small. Uh, snow flurries where yeah. it didn't stick and we didn't have to treat right. all the ones before that. Oh, yeah. We had three nor'easters in, in a row. In a row, yeah. No, I meant the ones after that. Yeah, yeah. no. Because it was in the grass for a little while. But yeah. But the roads seemed to be okay. So the last two over the last eight days or so, yeah. we haven't had to put down treatment. We haven't had to plow. Mm -hmm. um, That's good. Yeah. yeah. So I see 880? Yes, 880. And is you're saying, is, it, is that what it is, or is it less than 880? We have not seen the most the bills from the most recent yeah, so, storms. So we're still, just last Friday, we, we concluded our tree removal process right. from the edge of the road. From mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, had, uh, we had two and sometimes three tree companies out removing all the large pieces of uh, of tree debris at the edge of the road. Mm -hmm. um, so those those invoices are coming in. We, we shouldn't have to purchase any more salt. We shouldn't have to put any more resources out on the roads to fight storms. But you, you never know, I, I may have just jinxed <laughs> us. <laughs> Come on, it's April 11th. They're getting 36 inches of snow in Michigan this week. There's something on We there. had 36 Sunday, in Denver. Mm -hmm. okay. Or not in Denver, in <laughs> outside of Denver. It's no. never ending. Okay, so that number's yeah. still holding that, that 880. Mm. So, wait, so 880 is what's the is current value of the deficit. The deficit. deficit. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And so all that tree removal gets, we can put that under snow and ice because it was related to a snowstorm? Yes. Nice. And MEMA has asked us for the, the first nor'easter and the second nor'easter. They're gathering the costs okay. in the region. It has to trip a certain level mm -hmm. before they will consider 
declaring an emergency, which can be re funded uh, or re repaid through FEMA. So we haven't heard back on either of those yet, but we've provided the necessary information. Okay. And we've got our fingers crossed, and we're hopeful that some of the funds will come back. Historically, would we find out before town meeting, or um, mm -hmm. this could go be in the summer or it's fall? A it's a longer process. The, the governor has to go to Washington. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know that we'll know before town meeting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. John Westerling. Thank you all very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Good, Good evening. Good night. Okay. Thanks, John. Thank you. And drive safely, please. You too. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else we want to cover on the, I know it's been a long meeting, so mm -hmm. is there anything else we want to cover tonight or? Uh, well, we will have time to discuss. Tomorrow we have our public hearing. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And maybe it won't take the whole evening. <laughs> maybe it will take five minutes, so, uh, um, but we'll definitely continue discussing the agenda. I think it's, is it time, we, is it time to start uh, voting on the articles or voting on the operational budget at this point yeah. after the meeting. Yeah. 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 So we'll do that tomorrow or after the meeting tomorrow? Like it will be after the public hearing. Right. Okay. Yeah. In, the, in the regular meeting. Okay. Yeah. Did that get booked? Or are it's we having a, a short it's night? A, it's a regular meeting. A portion of it. Yes, yes, that holds a public yeah. hearing. Yeah. Okay. Do we do we have an update on what happened at the Board of Selectmen meeting? Now we had a couple of articles we weren't sure if they were going to be on the ballot or not, and that was supposed the, to be decided last night. There will be no ballot questions. Okay. They said no ballot questions. Yes. Which means everything that is a borrowing is within the levy limit. Correct. Okay. And we've confirmed that they can cover all that amount because it wasn't like six million dollars worth between. Um, the turf, the turf and the fields uh, and what was the other one? Oh, undergrounding. Yeah. Undergrounding. Well, they're borrowing, so. They're borrowing. So the, the debt service schedule is within the, the is less than the uh, excess levy that we're projecting for FY19. Okay. How, how about in 20? In 20, the excess levy is projected to go up um, even then. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I look very quickly at the projected debt service for both the AstroTurf fields mm -hmm. and the downtown corridor project. Um, they each don't exceed 400,000 a year. So I'm sorry, they each don't or combined? They each, each do not exceed 400. So it could be 800,000 per year for the two of them. Yeah. But again, it, remember the downtown corridor project is two, three years off from construction. But the turf would go in this summer. Yeah. So you'd hit you'd hit almost the four hundred thousand in FY nineteen yeah. for the turf. Yeah, I can tell you the exact downtown number for wouldn't the happen till probably twenty. Yeah, I can tell you the exact number for the turf in one second. Turf is at three point five million turf. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, but then C P C could offset Not it. Good. Donations could offset yeah. it. It does make it interesting. I thought the projections were getting tighter and tighter over time in terms of our excess levy mm -hmm. capacity. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We have the projection. I heard the house budget came out today and they're increasing local aid a little bit more, but like <laughs> less than a percent. Which means <laughs> so we won't see any of it, right? right? Over, yeah, the, yeah, go over, the, over governor's the governor's budget. Yeah, yeah. Over the governor's. In, in fact, I, I, I saw the email just before we got oh, here really? and I printed yeah. the page with the H's. 
Yeah. Yeah. Kinto on the but we, I just need to add the two numbers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I, yeah. I think we can discuss, well, I don't know how we can discuss it, but it'll be part of our deliberation on the articles tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And do we have free cash? So Has that been certified? Yes, free cash is certified. Is that what's showing up here? Or? Yeah. Call it. Okay, great. Yes. What's the amount? Uh, so 1497.72 or something. One four nine eight seven eight two. All right. So at this point, are we ready to adjourn? Um, just for the board's information, we also included copies of the bulk of the data that the committee will we believe the committee will need. To put together the appropriations committee report. Take a, yes, exactly. Take a look at that, review it, give us your comments. We tried to put in as much information on the debt service because that's the topic that came up yeah. Yeah, yeah. on, on yeah. Monday. Yeah. And, right. and again, the suggestions take a quick look at it. Right. If there's anything that you believe we need to put it to, to include, let us know and then we'll start working on that. Right. So you've provided the the backup information for it, so to speak, or is this, because you know how last year we had separated out by the different pieces of the government to to, to describe what some of the significant changes were. We, 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 right. We'll be putting we, that we into that. it. Exactly. Okay. Yes. okay, so this we, is more of a, this all the support documentation of what we want to pull from it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for putting that together so quickly. I know everything's kind of rushed, so it's appreciated. We, it's we, we're really it. trying to make this schedule work. <laughs> 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 yeah, and, and, and thankfully we also have uh, Will in the office. He's, he's helping us a great deal in, in, in complying with the data for this. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, and you're full-time now, right? Full-time employee, not the, not the temporary employee. Is a temporary employee. You're still a temporary employee? Yes. Yeah. Oh, good heavens. I thought you were full-time now. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Things are moving much faster this year. Yeah, you know why? We got a complete budget, which was, I think, the best thing we could have done. Yeah. Even though it, it took a long time to get here, yeah. Yeah. There's, it's not moving around afterwards. You know yeah. that the budget has been gone over with a fine tooth comb to find any cuts, so there's really, unless there's just mm -hmm. yeah. general issues with something, it, it basically has gotten a lot of scrutiny over the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. okay. That's good. All right, are we ready to adjourn? Sure, I'll move to adjourn. Second. All, right, all those in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 That's our only vote today, isn't okay. it? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we Great. made it by 10, before 10 o'clock. Yes. Yeah. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank no, you. Good evening. Yeah.